Hello, Peter. We're back. That was a weak opening quote from our two. Dude, l- I mean, uh, I mean, listen, it's relevant, Kyle. That's all that matters. Right. I, but he he never said we're back. Well, I had to inform everyone that we have returned. We only missed two weeks. Kyle, we missed a month. No, well, also, yes, oh, yeah, Kyle. Say hi, Sophie. Hi. I return from my summer long journey. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, since we missed. Um, so, approx- what's the first topic we want to talk about? Uh, we got a lot to pick from because we missed approximately an ass load of time. So, we have a lot of news to get through. Um, I'll let one of you. Yeah. This no, Kyle. Most- you you choose. I just you said, choose. Okay. Um, let's start off with the most recent stuff. Let's talk about Fandom Two, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> no, it's Fandom Two and the Lost Kingdom. <laughs> Fan- Fandom Two: Colon Revengeance. <laughs> All right, we're wasting time. We're wasting time. PC Fandom is coming back again this year. Um, and the luckily, slate looks pretty I cool. I definitely know we're gonna have. Probably more Black Adam content, an actual trailer maybe this time. One thing I doubt about it. it last one, time. one thing about it that annoyed me is that they basically said what's happening in every press conference. Like they said what was getting a trailer, what was getting a teaser, and what was getting a sneak peek. I'm like that's that's kind of annoying. Like just keep that a surprise. Well, I just really just needed them to tell me we're getting a Batman trailer. That's all well, I needed them to say. Everything we, else. We, we pretty much knew we were. Well, well I need, I, I just needed like confirmation, okay? Because, you know, considering, you know, recent people talking about this movie, I need to see more of this film. It's been over a year, damn it. I need new footage. Trey, I want to know something funny about the, uh, the um, poster that I liked. What? The, they CGI'd off um, Robert Pattinson's stubble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's basically looking at the uh, Superman mustache. I'd be like, you know, fuck you. We're gonna do it right this time. Yeah. Still looks pretty weird. He looks too smooth. Yeah. No. I like. I like my man with his, you know, rough, you know, crusty face and you know, scarred suit. Yeah. Still clean. Another thing about the tri- about this poster that interests me was we got to see Batgirl, like the new one. I think that's the Gotham Knight suit. See, you you can think that all you want. But you are just wrong. No, oh, I think I'm correct. Well, Trey, I'm going to nail in the coffin right now. Got- the Gotham Knights Batgirl is white, and the one on the poster is not white. I think that's just a darker 3D model, but I might Trey, just be racist. I think you're just racist. <laughs> Damn. Because <laughs> also the suit looks pretty different, and I don't like it. It, it do- really doesn't. It looks the same. It looks the same, but the cowl's different. Not really. <laughs> the cowl... It, the Batgirl in Gotham Knights has an overhead cowl, and the one in the poster has an underhead cowl that doesn't have, like, that has full hair showing, like, Batman. Okay, but at Fandom, when we get, you know, a full image and it's a completely different suit, then, you know, well, don't come crying to me. The thing is, we won't, Trey. I'm pulling, she's literally a different ethnicity than the other. <laughs> I, this is really easy. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm not, I'm not going to dig myself a bigger grave. <laughs> I th- I'm excited for fandom. I think it's well. Yeah, it's gonna be four hours of epicness. Is it only four hours? Cause last it's year, only, yeah, it's only four hours. Last year was like all day, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they do admittedly have less to show us because um, I don't know, looks like I think something was going around like the flu last year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, I'm also kind of happy sure because last year they showed us a bunch of stuff that I. I mean, it was cool, but it's stuff, you know, I was like, you know, just give me, give me Batman. Give me, give me things. Give me more. Give me Suicide Squad. Give me, give me Flash. Also, I'm surprised. There's only like two or three. There's only going to be like two or three new announcements. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at the poster right now. That That's definitely not the Gotham Knights one. Yeah, we'll see about that. She doesn't look anything like it. This is uh, moving on. She kind of looks like the... going to go more... Think of what are going to be starting up soon, or well started by then. Mm-hmm. I imagine we're going to get a Armageddon 
crossover trailer at fandom the cw next cw crossover do we want to predict any of the new projects because we tried that last year that was actually our very first episode yeah wow that's crazy and that's that's just dawned on me all right anyway um yeah we've been doing this for over a year i just realized yeah please shut up um time isn't real well i'm aware yeah, we started this during COVID, and we're still in COVID. Eh, good job, U.S. government. Anyway, um, let's t- so let's just take a look. What do we think is going to be announced? Like brand new projects. Well, brand new. I don't know. I thought <laughs> I think we might get trailers for Cape Crusader, but no, I'm talking about like they're trailer for the Naomi show. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. That's, that's gonna last a season. Well, negative Nancy, who invited you to the party? <laughs> Positive Nancy. CW and they always renew stuff even when I shouldn't. Yeah. I, no matter let's, what, I get a second season. I think this would be fun. Everyone just take a random shot in the dark, a property that doesn't have like a movie or show yet, and predict it will like have ha- be one of the new projects that they Booster have. Gold. I don't know. Phantom Stranger. You know, you're I want uh, you're right. Booster Gold Blue Beetle movie. And, 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 and well, well, you know, not yeah. Blue not Blue Beetle. We we we'll, 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 we'll talk about that later. Ted Ted Core Blue Beetle. Mary? We have stuff to talk about regarding the other Blue Beetle. Don't you worry. Mhm. Booster Gold movie that Ted Core Blue Beetle appears on. Yeah. That that's ideal. You're right. Sorry, but like Still there for a good part of the movie. Yeah. I would love to see a Midnight and Apollo movie. That's probably not going to happen, but. Well, WB is, you know, racist and homophobic, so I wouldn't imagine. Yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised. Also, this is just another random shot in the dark. Um, the New Gods movie might get turned into a graphic novel. It won't, but I want it to. Yeah. All right, is that all we have to say on fandom? Because there really isn't that much to talk about because it hasn't really happened yet. Yeah, until we get, you know, more news or one until it, you know, happens. One more thing. Uh, TDK will be in uh, Peacemaker. Okay. Because James Gunn said today that one of the, like, the Team A people survived that we didn't know, so it's, he's not talking about Weasel. And if, I you think... look, if you look at the footage of, like, Amanda Waller's, like, POV, it says that TDK is in critical condition. Not dead. I think it's Boomerang. Trey, you've seen the movie, right? Yes. Trey. I don't care. This is comic books. Anything can happen. I want him to be the one, because he was probably my favorite of Team A after, you know, Pete Davidson, my love of my life. But I really don't think... But Pete Davidson ain't coming back. (laughs) Pete Davidson ain't coming back. I'm Trey. I am. All right. are, Are you ready to move on? Yes. All right, let's talk about Blue Beetle. Because, God damn it, Kyle, we did it. Yes. We did it. Go back, we did it. Like, if you go back to when they announced the Blue Beetle movie, me and Trey both said Solo Mar- Mar- this Mar- shit. We called it. We- Solo Marduano, I, we love you. Love and you, you got what you deserve, my friend. Co- Not entirely because this should be in a theater, but, God damn it, we did it. Cobra Kai for life, Solo. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hash Brown. You know, I'm not. We're not even gonna talk about what we think this show's gonna be. This is just gonna be us gluing that we were right. Yeah, through all of you. Terry Buchanan's about to be Terry McGinnis. Oh my God, please. Oh, yeah, God, that's great. Actually, he was in a new movie recently with a TikToker, and that's all I have to say on that. Was it Kissing Booth Three? I imagine it was Kissing Booth no, Three. No, it was. It, it it got it was it's called He's All That or something. Oh, the <laughs> She's All That remake. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's apparently anyway, not moving good. on. Anyway, moving on. Blue Beetle. Yes. Why is this still, still on HBO Max? Let me be. We see your bullshit. Okay. Put this in a theater. We deserve it. Look, I don't mean to get all tinfoil hat on you. You like? But how weird is it that the three or so movies we know are coming exclusively to HBO Max for DC all star characters that are not white? Ah. That's a little weird. It's not like he has a history of racism or anything. 
Nah. I just, I just think that was peculiar. A silly it's not like Walter Hermada, Walter Hermada and Jeff Johns are still employed. Nah. Yeah. It's not like all of these movies would undoubtedly make millions in the theater. Nah. Nah. What are you getting at, WB? What do you want? We, we want... Okay, I'm not going to get into this now. All it, just that the, all those movies should be in theaters. Facts. You don't see Marvel pulling that shit. No, they, they, no. they'll put TV shows there because, you know, that's where TV goes. But they don't put movies there because they know better. Yeah. All right, that's all I have to say on that. Yeah. All right, um, try to fix it. Movie to movie. What else? What else? What else to talk about? What do you say, Sophie? Here, Trey, Trey, you, Trey, you pick, you pick something on the list. Oh, okay. Because I can, I, Sophie, we can tell you're talking, but you sound a bit muffled right now. Hmm. What to choose? Hmm. I don't want to get angry yet, and I don't want to put a tinfoil hat on yet. Hurry up, Trey. We can't have dead air. Okay, fine. We'll talk about the Rock not being F10 because family. What the fuck? Can't you, can't you and Vin Diesel just kiss and make up already? Okay, uh, come on, man. What about family? We don't want to. I want to see it. everybody in Fast Part, Fast Ten, Part One and Two. Stop with this bullshit. Hobbs and Shaw Two can wait. Give me my full Fast Family. You know, the tinfoil hat part of me wants to be like, oh, they're saying that, but he really is in the movie. It's going to be a big deal when he is. But the much more rational part of me is like. That's stupid, Kyle. This is Fast and Furious we're talking about. We can't pull off a twist twist that they tried. It's true. Which means that he's not that he is in the movie. We're gonna find out in the trailer. Yeah, which would be still pretty dope, but still. Mm -hmm. I just I wanna see that because that means we might not see that character again. That's not true. Hobbs and Shaw 2 is definitely happening. Oh, is that con like confirmed or is it just? It's not confirmed, confirmed, but like they set up a sequel and the producers have like heavily Did talked Hob about it. Then Hobbs and Shaw sucked. I, I kind of liked it. Yeah, but isn't it like not generally liked and didn't not make that much money? Well, that's because a lot of people saw it as unfunny. It made a lot of money, but. Oh, okay. It's well, I've seen happen. some of the clips out of context and like the cameos didn't seem very funny. But Kyle, did you hear about that Game of Thrones ending? Shut the fuck up. Brian Reynolds could have played a legitimate character in these movies. Or should I just leave and return? Oh, we heard you there. You've been muffled for like the past few minutes. Okay, I'll leave and come back. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Yeah. So, Trey, you like, what would you rate uh, Hobbs and Shaw at 10? I know what uh... I'm curious. As a Fast and Furious movie, it is a six. As a movie, I'm not gonna talk. I'm not gonna say. You're I right. I forgot you know, what I'm supposed to rate uh, Fast and yeah, Furious movies. It's law. Just it's not even law. It's just how it works. Yeah, everyone knows that. And if you do treat these as movies, why? <laughs> no, it's not even that. Like, it's not even like, oh, you're watching them. Like, he's like, oh, why would you do this? Like, you're literally just watching them incorrectly. Like, they're supposed to be topic. stupid. <laughs> they're making like, fun of themselves. People don't get that. Like, these movies are just trying to outdo themselves. And it's mm -hmm. working. <laughs> yep. Mm. All right. What else is there to talk about on, um, on the list? You want to get mad? Uh, uh, no, Tim no. Drake? Oh, yes, please. Let's talk about Tim Drake. All right, Sophie, I'll let you go first. Okay, um, I'll go first. Yeah. So, recently in the comics, Tim Drake finally came out as bi after writers have been queer baiting him for years because they weren't allowed to make him bi because DC doesn't like gay people. I wouldn't say they were queer baiting him. It was because queer baiting is supposed to be like when you tr make a character gay, just like draw in that, like, that audience just to have him be straight the whole time. It was more they were like 
queer coding him. But like, yeah. hinting. Yeah. Hinting at his sexuality. Ask that of his friend Bernard, um, who I think was in the old ninth, the nineties Robin comics. Yeah, he was in the very first Robin comics as like a stoner surfer dude. Never, he was never really applied to be gay, frankly. But I mean, it works. Like it's it's not like it's not like insane. Like why would you do that? It's like oh yeah, it's all right. Never really saw him that way, but like it makes sense. Yeah. Um, but the thing is. Weird because they broke Tim Drake and spoiler up like outside of the comics. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of annoying that they're off panel considering you know when Tim died, it was a very you know, there was a very emotional moment of Bruce and Steph hugging. You know that was cool. So you know breaking them off off panel off you know comic, it's a little weird. But honestly, you know, Tim being by, like, listen, I'm be the first to say it. In reality, superhero could be bi. I think having a superhero have a love interest, their sexuality doesn't matter. Superheroes having a love interest is all about what that person makes them happy. Because we look at these characters and they save people, they comfort other people, but they need to be comforted too. So their sexuality doesn't really matter as long as they have somebody to make them happy. So, you know, make all superheroes buy. It works. It, well said, Stray. Damn, from the one straight person on call. That, that went nicely done. I mean, it works for characters, so, I mean. Yeah. I One thing I was kind of scared of is that they were trying to do to be, like, performative. Like, at, like, like be like, oh, we have a gay character now. You could forget. Yeah, because this is, again, one of those things that, you know, national news is going to talk about. Robin's bye, guys. But look, Whoa. I can tell that they're trying to go the right angle for two reasons. A, a bi person wrote that story. B, they're having him actually go out with a guy. Instead of the, like, Alan Scott situation where he just says, I'm gay. And I'm never going to talk or date a man ever in this ever. It's like, okay, yeah. well, I can kind of, come on, man. But now with yeah. Drake, I can actually tell they're going for it. So, Sophie, you're cutting out a bit, but I can tell you're trying to say something to me. Can you hear me? Ish, but you're quiet. Yeah, Do you like, have, like the- headphones in, or is it, like you like, is your phone up to you? And the phone is to my mouth. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Zero. We did see Alan Scott's husband, so it wasn't just an I'm gay thing, and then we never see. Well, that's because Tom Taylor again. is God. Yeah, that's. I'm glad it happened. Thank you for correcting me there. But yeah, Tom Taylor. I love the man. We'll be talking about him later. Um, as look, it's gonna speak candidly as a bi person. This fucking rocks. Like, I, Tim Drake has always been my favorite Robin. So yeah, just candidly, it feels pretty cool to be represented like this. It's pretty sick. I like it. Um, I don't really have much more to say on this. It's like, dope. Cool. I like it. Good job. Good for said. Timmy. Yes, good for him. These bitches gay. Good for them. DC releases, Tim Drake is going to be on the cover. I kid you not. Oh, man, I'm the so exciting. I, I was reading through Infinite Frontier, and they had the big splash page with a bunch of uh, DC gay characters. And I forgot, I honestly forgot some of them existed. Like, um, the, um, who's that one guy in the New 52 Teen Titans comics? Who had like the hand powers? I don't know. I don't. I, I want to say his name's Quake, but that's probably because I'm doing my um U.S. history homework. Uh, mm. Quake. So, um, I don't remember. Yeah. He had he had the ability to make like giant purple hands that like looked like rocks. I have I have that comic on my shelf. I could very easily just go grab it. But my bed's very comfortable, so I don't. I won't be doing that. Lazy piece of shit. Yes, correct. All right. Do you want? Let's. All right. Uh, Tim Drake being by. Oh, about about oh. the gay character Extraño. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, Trey, do you want to try pick something uh, else on the list? Uh, we get we got an image for that for that for that new Lord of the Rings show. Oh looked, my god! Yes, we looked did. Pretty cool. God, it looked pretty was, cool. It if what Trey told me is correct. If so, if, I, if, if this is incorrect, uh, hate hate towards Trey. I'll put his address in the description. Um, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, takes place during the Second Age. Right. From what we've been told, yes. Right before the defeat of Sauron. Again, if this is if this is incorrect. Um, Trey's address will be in the comments. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you know, I, I'm pretty, I'm cautiously optimistic. I'll say that. Because this well, show is blowing their wad on, like, budget. And so, I don't know how they're gonna make that back. And so, I don't know. Since, you know, Amazon... Yeah, but I don't know if this will get a second season. Is my thing. Like, even for Amazon, this pr- this might not be profitable. Yeah, because like my nervous things, I don't really care about profits. I care about quality. Well, and yeah, but the company it's because it's it's because Peter Jackson's attached. Now, there's good and bad of that. It's good because you know he's been a part of Lord of the Rings films since you know 2000. Yeah. And you know, but like thing is, those Hobbit movies took away that magic a little bit, and just. What's this? What's this show gonna have? Are we going back to the old ways? Or are we sticking with you know CGI orcs? What are we doing? God, I, I have a. I feel like this show will use more CGI. I think it might be a Star Wars sequels thing where like technically it'll use more CGI than the Hobbit movies, but since and they use it in more creative ways, it'll be less noticeable. If they do it in a Mandalorian style, that's perfect. But if we just you know make every orc CGI again, I'm gonna. Pitch a fit. I think specifically they're going to make the orcs practical again because that's the thing everyone talks about. Everyone yes. talks about how oh, I hate how the orcs look. So I think that may be like one of the bigger changes. Like, yeah, like Peter Jackson, orcs. please take the criticism. Yeah, he's a direct. He could probably take criticism, I'd hope. Yeah. Do we think he made three of the greatest movies of all time and three ish movies? Yeah, three of the most meh movies of all time. Mm-hmm. Do we think we're going to get any returning cast? Uh, Elrond. El- Elrond, I'm betting. Um, yeah. Gandalf, it's a possibility, but I don't he know. Was he alive? Well, he's, he was created before the creation of Middle Earth. So. Yeah, because he's technically not a human, if I'm correct, right? Yes. He yeah, is one he... of the nine? No, not nine. Seven wizards. Yeah. So he's been around fucking forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think Elrond, Legolas' is dad from, like, the Hobbit movies, he could probably come back. Yeah. I want to see Legolas. That would feel... Well, I don't think Legolas, Legolas has been born yet. Yeah, but even if he was, that would be really fan servicey. Mm-hmm. Which is what, you know, happened in The Hobbit. <laughs> yeah. My biggest wish is I want this to take heavy inspiration from the Silmarillion. Mm. I think that it, that is, like, the biggest thing you gotta get. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, I'm very... Look, the quality of the show, it's gonna... I don't wanna, you know, say too much, but, like, I'm pretty sure... got a big... We got, this show got a big budget. Yeah, I'm. this will be a pretty banging show. Like, I don't wanna, like... I'm not gonna, like, blow my water here, like, oh, this is gonna be the best show ever, but, like, it, this is gonna be a pretty damn good show, all things considered. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like, I'm pretty excited. Cautiously I'm, optimistic, as always. Look, look. It's of my opinion that if you're always cautiously optimistic, you'll never really be disappointed because you're always excited. True. Because you're always excited, but you're there's always the possibility that something's wrong. You got to sniff quietly. Mm. Quietly, yes. All right. Um. Yeah, that's all I got to say on that. Um, that show's gonna be sick. Yes. Anyway, Saruman? Question mark. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's you know again one of the seven okay. wizards, so you but know. I, would, I kind of, I, I kind of want them to, because. Oh yeah, they're definitely but, not going to do that. Yeah, they're definitely we can't get not. back. We can't get back Lee, which would, which really sucks. Mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure Christopher Lee pa- passed away when I was a little little kid, but I'm still very bummed about it. Yeah, no, his last movie was the last Hobbit movie. Yeah, I'm still bummed out, like man. Oh, um, yeah. Cumberbatch's smoke. 
I want more dragons because from the lore, Smog is compared to other dragons, not the strongest. So, you know, yeah, I'd like to see My friend Sam sent me this part of, like, a bunch of dragons from Lord of the Rings, and there's this, it's like Smog was the smallest, and it keeps getting bigger. And there's this giant one called Something the Black. Yeah, so especially since considering, you know, Smog was the best, was probably the best part of that Hobbit trilogy. We saw how cool and big and badass he was. It'd be really cool to be like, hey, you see this bitch? Here are the cool ones. Mm -hmm. If I had to make an official negative prediction, I'm pretty sure we're going to see the Balrog just for fan service. Mm. Like, because Balrogs are pretty rare, if if my knowledge is correct, in the Lord of the Rings world and Middle Earth. But I'm pretty sure, just for fan service, we'll see it once. Go back to the shadow. Drink. Not a, not a huge. Like I've gone on record before saying that fan service can't be done right, even the super shameless stuff. But people, <laughs> and, really, and, people hate fan service, dude. Hey man, I'm a fan. I occasionally like to be serviced. Never say that again, please. <laughs> please, God, never. Say I'm that gonna again. say it during fandom. Oh, uh, you suck. All right. Anyway. Yeah, although I'm very excited for that that show. It's gonna be cool as hell. Yeah. All right. I'll I'll pick the next thing on the list. Oh good. Um, there's so many things. Do you want to talk about the Batman? The uh the kind of half half well, order reviews. Well, yeah, because everyone's you know saying they loved it, and god damn it, they confirmed Batman <laughs> doesn't kill. Yeah. Thank Listen, Christ. Those, for those who don't know, certain people. Like industry people got to see an extremely rough cut of the Batman. Like, like pieces of shit. Yeah, I really would have killed to be in that room. Um, but yeah, basically the things that were confirmed is. Should I say everything that was confirmed that I know of at least? Well, yeah, like you know, it's something matters. Like you know, three hours. God bless. Which I don't think the the final film will be three hours. It's not going to be, but I, I know it's not. But I really want it to be this three the, hours. That's beautiful. Come this, on. Deleted scenes have not been finalized, so I think this is a full director's cut. So I don't think this. I think at 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 least fifteen minutes will be shaved off of that. That has say, it's fine, but if WB goes in and is like, okay, we're going to chop up this movie for a bit, I'm going to be like, fuck off, fuck well, off, every, fuck well, off. WB does that for literally every movie. Yes, but they don't, but, but, but stay every, away from my Batman, damn it. Every single company does that for every movie. I don't, but, 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 but just like, let, let Matt have decisions, please. Look, don't, don't, there's a lot of directors who deserve to just have decisions, but I mean, it's just kind of the way the industry works. Yes, but fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, Warner Brothers. <laughs> That's a very valid point. All right. Um. I bl- so should I say some of the things that were confirmed? Uh, yeah. The things that stuck out to me that I remember were um, Bruce Wayne narrates the whole movie. That's so cool. I like that. I because a lot, I'd say most Batman comics I've read do something like that. Like well, Black Panther, um... not Bruce Wayne, but still does that. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Long Halloween does. Long Halloween does it occasionally. Okay, well, they still do. I, it's a very common trope in the comics, but it's not really been done in the movies. Like, the only reason Dark Knight Returns is, you know, as good as it is in book form yeah. is, well, even though I would say that the inner dialogues is what holds that book back. And but, you, you know, considering... I do think the movie's better. But considering, you know... Matt says that Ego is such a big inspiration for him, and considering that book takes place mostly in Bruce's head. I, I, you know, yeah, it's, you know, a bit like, you know, we understand why Matt wants Bruce to have some internal dialogue. Yeah, I think a lot of people, like, uh, I'm, okay, a little, little hot take. There's been an extreme lack of respect for narration lately. Mm. People are like, oh, they, it's a crutch. Shut up. It, 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 it can't, I will admit, there are cases where it very much can be used as a crutch, but it can really heighten a story if used right. Yeah, like Scorsese have been doing it for years. What yeah, exactly. Think? But like, I'd say Twilight, even though it doesn't really have traditional narration, does have an instance of like narration that I really don't like. Um, spoilers for Twilight, but in the second to last, third to last maybe movie, I don't remember. It's when Jacob and Prince on the baby. Uh, it sounds really weird out of context. Don't question it too much. Jacob's, th- not Jacob, Edward 
just explains off screen. He's he's in there in person. He's just off, off screen slightly. He starts explaining what it means for a wolf to imprint, and he's not talking to anyone. He's talk. It's literally he's supposed to like be talking to the people around him, but he's not. He's not. We don't see him. He's not facing anyone, and it's the worst, most boring. It's like he's literally like once a wolf imprints on someone, it's a bond that can't be broken. Like, what? It's literally just explaining the process that should have been explained a movie ago. Anyway, that's yeah. my take of the day. Mm. Why sucks? So I'm really. Ooh, ooh, ooh you're some bringing some out the heat. <laughs> you guys feel that? You guys sweating from that hot take? Shut up. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. People are, you know, already saying that this is one of the greatest comic movies ever, and it's a rough cut. But you know, we expect this. But people are also saying that, you know, oh, the, the thing that I want to say is that people have described this as a horror film, which basically mm. is telling me that this is going to be R-rated, which I am skeptical for. Okay, but what? at the same time, it's confirmed Batman's not killing. And please, for the love of God, don't make Batman swear. Okay, here's my thing, Batman. In my opinion, Batman should not swear when regular, but like, I think it should be like a rare thing, like Flashpoint. Flashpoint's an amazing example of having Batman swear and having it be good with the "you're one hell of a messenger" line. Yeah, well, yeah. Batman can say "hell" and "damn." That's about all I can accept. Bat, yeah, Batman. It, we t- we're gonna talk about this when we talk about Titans, but Batman should not use bad language. Especially no, not just Batman. No one in the Bat family should, because they are all raised by a British dude from the army who's so fancy and formal that if he catches you swearing like you're a pirate, he's going to backhand you. No, they, they weren't I was going to say Jason is the exception. Well, Jason's barely an exception. When Jason is Robin, I don't think he should be an exception. I think he should try try to get away with it the way, like, eight-year-olds try to get away with saying crap, but then, like, mm-hmm. it's, but then he'll, like, he'll, like, Ben will, like, hit him on the, on the wrist and be like, hey, don't say that. And then when yeah. he's Red Hood, he can swear all he wants. Because he's an adult now. Because he's, he's cool. Red. I have guns. Yeah. In my opinion, they weren't just raised by someone who's proper and British. They were raised by a literal saint. They so, were raised uh, by Alfred Pennyworth. Yeah. A.K.A. Jesus in the DC Universe. Like, the nicest, most caring individual. Like, you, we all saw that Superman panel where he says, like, I look, where he tells Nightwing, I looked up to Alfred. He raised the greatest heroes the world has yeah. ever known. I sent you that panel yesterday because I saw it on Instagram. I was like, damn, this shit's gonna make it's me. It's so cool! Until you all think that until you see, guys, you all think that until you watch the Pennyworth TV show. Oh, yeah. See, You'll have a different opinion on him. Yeah, that's what I think. I'm, I am interested in that show. Because I've been told some pretty cool things from it, specifically by you, Sophie, some of the stuff that you've told me about it. But I don't know if I want to see Alfred as a hardened badass. Well, I mean, I've seen Alfred as a hardened badass. I watched Beware the Batman, and I do expect him to have somewhat of that in this movie. Because, you know, it's Andy Circus. I don't expect him to be, like, pure butler. But we're going to get some badass Alfred in there, but also, you know, some of that caring, heartwarming stuff. Just, you know, I want to know what he looks like. But, like... Yeah, that's my biggest thing. Comic where like um, there's an intruder in the mansion and Alfred shoots him with um, the like fake bullets. What's it called? Oh, blanks. Um, BBs. Yeah, blanks. He shot blanks at the intruder, and Bruce came in and is like, "What? Why do you have a gun in the house?" And Alfred is like, "I'm not telling you. You'll never find all of them." <laughs> I mean, Bruce can't. St- I mean, Bruce can't stop Alfred from carrying a gun. Yeah, Alfred, I, Alfred respects that rule, but Alfred's like, I'm the butler. Alfred is the one person in the in, in the entirety of the DC multiverse that Batman can't do anything to stop. This is true, because he's his dad. <laughs> yeah. And we're gonna get into the Bat family familiar relationships though, but Alfred mm. laying the groundwork for like the actual family part of the Bat family, because that's my thing. A lot of other superhero families don't feel like families, like the Superman family. Like, I think that's a really good group of characters, but I don't think the word family works. I think it's like, I don't reason most you can call it a family because a lot of them are related. But besides it's, that, no. Nah. Well, like, it's, it's a big plot point that Superboy doesn't feel connected to Superman like John, like Con- Connor Kent. Like, that's a big plot point in a lot of his comics. So I think even calling them a family is kind of like, 
Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's weird. Like, I can, some stories do make them feel like a family, I'll admit. But mm-hmm. a lot of the times, they just kind of feel like, like teammates. And it's nothing, yeah. it's just a different relationship than the Bat family. Mm-hmm. The Bat family is, you know, based on Bruce's strengths and him letting a family in when he lost a family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which was why it would have been cool if Anarchy was Robin, like they was originally planned, but no. All right, we're getting off track. We just had to get your favorite Robin. Yeah, instead we get the best Robin. Oh, no. I'm, I'm distraught. Uh, that's anyway, uh, more about the Batman. Uh, people have said Paul Dano is awesome, which, you know, I'm obvious. Sure. I'm, I'm I'm appalled. I can't believe it. Yeah, wow. Paul Dano was really good as the Riddler. Didn't see that oh. coming. Whoa, wait. Let's pump the brakes with this groundbreaking information. <laughs> I know. Uh, apparently, Zoe Kravitz was incredible. Again, obvious. Apparently, apparently, the f- apparently her action scene is like she has the best action. Which I'm yeah, the action was also, you know, a thing that was like, guys, the action is insane. Which, which you know, scene. Already- yeah, which we already knew, but like at the same time, you know, it's like nice. Yeah, like. Dope. Nice. Thank you for that. I, I want to see some good action where Batman doesn't kill people in a Batman movie. Because the coolest Batman action scene, he kills at least six people. Yeah, that that's kind of like, I really, like, we're talking about the warehouse fight in BBS, right? Yes. Like, that fight is so cool. But, God, he's killing all of them. And all of Nolan's scenes are so choppy and cut weird that I hate them. I really don't like the Nolan fight scenes, any of them, really. I, I like the first Bane fight. The second one is fine. The Ra's al Ghul fight in Begins is awful. All of the Bane fights, in my opinion, just feel way too stiff. Like, Bane, it's, the problem, in my opinion, is, it's, it, I don't know, but they, I think it's both of them. They both just feel like they can't bend their arms, like they're Lego men. I don't know. I kind of granted. I don't feel like these are two of the most of the best fighters on the planet fighting each other. But you know, it's more of you know just a street brawl kind of thing. More than yeah, the second they, one, but the first one, it's you know I, I'm I'm okay with it. They didn't lean too far enough into that, in my opinion. Like if they wanted to be like a gritty street brawl, like in my opinion, it should have been. Then they should have gotten a bit more like gritty with it. Is that mm-hmm. it's just stylized enough to where it's annoying? Fair. But we all realize why the Dark Knight's the best in the trilogy because it's the one with the least amount of fight scenes in it. Yeah, because it doesn't need the fight scenes. Yeah, because Batman can't exact Batman versus Joker isn't exactly you know a one on one brawl kind of thing. <laughs> it's not really a fight; it's more of a pummeling. Yeah, uh, but that's a damn good movie. I need to rewatch that. I haven't it's watched so it. So good. I haven't watched it. Also... Like... Yeah, but also like apparently there's a there's a specific scene in the Batman. That the audiences were gripping their knees, gasping at, which. All right. What's that going to be? Do you remember the Harley Quinn controversy from last year? Or is it earlier this year? Yeah. Yeah, okay. What if it's that? What are you talking about? Yeah, uh, the Harley Quinn controversy. I don't want to say it because we're technically still endorsed by Roswell uh, by our school. But, you know. Trey, you know? I'm I'm aware. I don't that think make, that's what it would, is. Would that make you grip your knee and gasp? Shut up. I don't think that's what it's gonna be. I have a theory. Yeah. A lot of people are saying it's an owl's reveal, right. which I could see that. But like, this is like, people are describing this as like, because no, like, as not a hardcore Batman fans were gasping from this, and I feel like hardcore Batman fans would be like, oh my god, Court of Owls. But Sophie, this what do you is more think? of you know. Be like Haley Circus, possibly Robin. Mm. Oh yeah, that's possible. I think I think there's a, I think there's a chance that Bruce is gonna kill someone by the end of this movie because people like I understand I just said that Batman's not gonna kill this movie and there's a scene that specifically states that he doesn't kill this movie, but it I think be- that's going to happen. He's gonna have a specific rule and he's going to break it at the end of this. And then the sequel is about him trying to like, go back to that and being like, I killed someone. I broke the promise I made to my parents and Robin's going to come in and help him fix it. Uh, I think, in my opinion, this is, it might be something, we mentioned it's a horror movie, it might be something just so like, messed up, that's like, I was like, Jesus, mm. why, what the fuck? This because is like, again, people have described Riddler as like, terrifying and I'm like, ooh, yeah. I like I'm that. Like, I'm a little turned off to horror movies as of lately. Right. Mm. And, and yes, that is full <laughs> Pray's fault. And so I, I I hear this and I'm like, huh. So we're going to get two comic book themed horror movies within two weeks of each other. 
That and Doctor Strange too. Within it's, it's, I think three weeks of each other actually. Cool. Man, Trady, it's okay, what, Kyle. I, I I have prepared you for this. Trey, do you want to tell the audience what you did? Yeah, I made Kyle watch Hereditary. Yeah, at like midnight. Yeah. Yeah, you asshole. <laughs> I'm proud of myself. You're never picking the movie again. I'm aware. You pick a film. <laughs> I swear to God, that movie. Ugh. Anyway, um, don't want to think about it. Um, so pretty dope. Like the Batman's probably gonna be sick as hell. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very excited. I give want... me more footage, please. Did we hear anything about Penguin? Uh, I did. I didn't. I I saw one tweet about it, but I don't remember it because I, a few I months know. ago people were saying he only gets a few minutes of screen time, like two scenes. Yeah, like Colin said that he wasn't like you know on set for long, but That's, I don't know. I'm fine with that. We we don't need to clutter this movie that much. Yeah. Oh, another three people have for uh, the gasping scene was Joker's going to show up. I yeah. doubt this heavily. It's not happening the first one. I would be. I don't think it's going to happen until the third one. Yeah, I honestly think Joker already exists in this universe. Batman's already dealt with him, which I really do want. I don't really need you know to see Batman and Joker you know meet up again. But I do kind of want to see that the relationship's already established and say that Robin shows up and Joker just breaks out and is like, Bruce, yeah. Batman cares about somebody. I'm going to take that away from him. Yeah, but at the same time, I really like the establishment of the relationship. I think it's really cool to see, like, Joker just as, like, a low-level crook not really caring about much. And he's like, ooh, bat, ooh, bat, ooh Batman. And he's like, okay, now I, fa- I found a toy to play with. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like this is we've seen this a lot, and I just which I they pro- will definitely do something new with it. But I just definitely want to see something new with it. Who do you want to play Joker in this trilogy? Michael Pitt. <laughs> Michael I have, Pitt. I have a pretty out of the box answer, actually. Is it Elijah Wood? Nope. Because that, even though I, but that would be cool. But no, it's not. Why do you guess who I who I want to play the Joker? And you're either gonna hate or be pretty okay with this casting. Willem Dafoe. Do you want to play no. Joker? What was that, Sophie? I have no idea who you'd want, but my... I would say the guy who played Joker in Gotham. Oh, uh, well, I don't uh, really think he fits in with Pattinson's Batman. Because, you know, he's got a Batman. His name is David Mazus. The guy, okay, he's so... Beautiful. The, the guy I want to play Joker... Not, no, not that guy, actually. It's Aubrey Plaza. Oh... Um. I think that would be a really fun spin on the character. I mean, sure. I, yeah, I just, uh, that's all I, th- I, th- I think she would do great. I think it'd be a fun spin on the character. Yeah, that's all I got to say. I think it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I could see it, but, you know, Michael Pitt. Who's my, what's he been in again? He uh, played, what's the character's name? Uh, he was in Hannibal. Uh, what's, oh, what was the character's name? I was going to say, I haven't seen that. I remember the yes, I have seen it. I've not watched many things, so I get surprised when I've seen things. But he shows up in season two, so you don't, you've only saw, like, the first four episodes, even one? E- maybe less. Maybe first three. I don't yeah, remember. Uh, it's, on the tip, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's because he gets recast in season three. I forgot what the reason was for that. All right, but um, it's him in season two of Hannibal. Who does he play? Um, Mason Verger. Mason Verger, him. Season two, season three, that he was great too. But season two, uh, Mason Verger, Michael Pitt. May, I want him to be Joker. Really? Yes. What What does he bring to the table? He's insane. We've gotten that. We got that with Jared Leto. Well, I, but he's like in insane, like. The way you played Mason Verger, like, he looked like Killing Joke Joker in Hannibal. He just looked like him. He laughed like him. That man can play the Joker, and I want to see it. Who's, like, is there any, like, popular picks for the Joker that you don't really like, that, like, you think would be pretty bad? Um, Because there a lot of names are getting thrown around. I've heard Malik, Willem Dafoe, I've heard Johnny Depp. Those aren't bad choices, but I'm like... Willem Dafoe? Yeah. I love Willem Dafoe. I think Willem Dafoe would be great in that role. No, I think all three of those guys would be great, but like, okay. The thing with the father is he's played so many comic book characters already. Yeah, and it's also like you know he's already playing a Green Goblin, so it's yeah. like, 
we've kind of already seen him do that, so I want. And he's going to play Goblin again. I don't want. It's not. It's like. Oh, it's not like. Oh, he wouldn't be a bad Joker. He'd be a great Joker. It's just we've already pretty much seen him play the Joker. Yeah. So, like, give, 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 give someone else a shot to show off their madness. Elijah Michael Wood. Pitt. That would be great. I want Elijah Wood's Mad Hatter. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see him as Joker. He was originally cast before Heath Ledger, and there was some concept art leaked of it. And I sent it to Trey. I don't know if this is new. I only saw it today, so it might be new. I mean, but... I could definitely see Elijah Wood in the specific Dark Knight take on the Joker. Like, I can imagine Elijah Wood saying Ledger lines. Granted, I don't know if he would have done as good of a job as Ledger, but he still would have done a pretty good job. You want to know how I got these scars, Mr. Frodo? That's what that's Sam... That, 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 I that, know, that's a... I know, I know. But he doesn't call Sam Mr. Wise. He calls him Sam. Oh, Sam. Oh, Sam. Like, I just imagine Elijah Wood saying, when the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people don't these eat each other. Okay, we're moving on now. <laughs> uh, let, let's, try to, let's try to save the big ones for last. Uh, there's a Moon Knight suit leak. Oh, yeah. Here's my thing. Here's my thing with this. I'm just going to go right into my thing. A lot of people are like, oh, but it looks bad. I don't think people know what a costume test is. Costume tests are pretty much, I wouldn't say never, but most of the time they're not indicative of the final suit. It could be one of hundreds of different testing suits. Yeah. Plus, like, it looks fine. It's like a mummy. A dark like mummy. It yeah. gives up the vibes I want. Because the if you were to directly translate the comic costume, it would look kind of weird. Yeah. So, you know, it also looks... looked bland, honestly. Eh, kind of. Just, just a white suit, a crescent moon, and a hood? I don't know. That uh, sounds a little bland. I kind of wanted them to go just for Mr. Moon, just for the first season of the show. Like, just that. I don't know. I, I, think, that, I think that would be pretty cool. Hmm. But, eh, you know, you'll never know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not much to say. I'm excited for that show. I'm sure my holiday. Yeah. But the man didn't decide to show up, so we're going to talk about it without him. Yeah. Prick. Yeah. All right, uh, what else uh, happened? Uh, Robert Edgers making a Nosferatu movie. Hell yeah. yeah. So, shit, what was my joke I was going to make? The ha, he forgot, so I could talk about it for a little bit. Uh, Robert Edgers is going to make a most Ferratu movie, and Anya Taylor Joy is going to be in it. So it's basically guaranteed to be incredible. I'm so excited. Those Ferratu is so cool. And I'm very gonna be, it's going to be so good, man. You know uh, how in the original movie there's like a legend that the most Ferratu is played by a real vampire? Yeah. Yeah, who do you think they should cast, cast knowing that information? Anybody. Um, who's a real life vampire? Jim. Paul Rudd. Two very different directions with that one. I mean, Paul Rudd definitely is not going to do it, but like you know, the man doesn't age. Um, <laughs> hmm. I kind of want Fassbender, but no, he's too pretty. We need someone old. Yeah. Christopher Lee would have been perfect. He actually already played a vampire. He actually already played Dracula. Yeah, I know, but he still would have been perfect. He would have. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Joe yeah. Pesci. Uh, Pacino. Yeah. De Niro. I can't think of anyone. No. Nah. Um, it, it's in good hands, though. I'm sure they'll make the right decision. Honestly, Jeremy Irons wouldn't be terrible. Oh, that'd actually be pretty good. Yeah. What other actors act? I don't know, man. Mm. Who acts anymore? I can't think of any like anyone old enough that isn't goofy. Like, I, you need someone menacing. Yeah. I want this to be more visceral take on those for out too. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna. We're gonna move on from this so Kyle <laughs> can continue to forget his joke. Quit, so no, said the joke with the real life vampire. Oh yeah. Okay, speaking of Nosferatu, I want to pose a question to you. If you were to get Ari Aster to take on an established horror franchise, which would you want him to take on? Because honestly, had whoever movies to know, so 
had mm. had someone else not been making Nosferatu, I probably would have said Nosferatu. He'd yeah, be, he'd be pretty good at like a vampire movie. Honestly, I kind of want him to do an Elm Street movie. Ooh, yeah, he could do a lot with like dreams. He sure could. He, the sick yeah. bastard. He's really a sick fuck. He's twisted. He's he is not You haven't seen Midsummer yet, but oh boy. I'm not gonna see Midsummer ever. You should. It's a fantastic film. Yeah, so it was Hereditary, and I hated every second of it. Fair. It was a good movie. Never, never, never want to have an experience even close to that again. I've seen it three times. Yeah, you're a sick fuck as well. You are. That is true. How did he sit through that movie three times? Okay, we're not gonna dwell on this. I don't want. I don't like mm. thinking about that movie for too long, frankly. Yeah. Anyway, uh, movies are good. Yes, uh, there's like two more kind of quick ones. Um, we're we're getting an Arkham show in the Batman universe. It yeah, yes, it's like it's pretty much confirmed. Yeah. Um. Cool. Yeah, I'm exp- I'm ex- I'm expecting this to be either Hugo Strange as protagonist and antagonist. Hugo Strange is gonna be involved. I can guarantee that. Played by Matt Nicholson or John Carlo Esposito, that would be perfect. But. I- I don't see John Carlo as a Hugo Strange. I can see it so much. No, I can see that man. That man could be the most intimidating, terrifying therapist ever. I Which is kind of why you know Mads, you know, makes sense because he played Hannibal. But yeah, that's also I, too easy for me. But John Carlo, that's a man. John Carlo gives me too much businessman vibes. He seems too like not rich, but like proper, too proper to be. Hugo. Well, like, Hugo Strange, like, you know, he's not, it's not like he's a businessman, but, you know, he talks in, like, you know, very calm yeah, tone. I, can, I, I wouldn't be mad. I just, I don't know. I think there's definitely other characters in the DC universe he'd be way better suited for. Well, he could play, you know, anybody, Marvel, DC, whatever. He's already he, in Star Wars. He needs to play someone, frankly. Yes. Like, he, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how he hasn't already been gotten. Hmm. So one of them's got to snatch him up soon before the other one takes them. Well, takes actually, them. probably both are going to snatch him up eventually. Yeah. Because, like, he's just such a high-ticket item for villains right now. Mm-hmm. Like, he's, like, he's he's Gus. He's in Far Cry somewhere. He's in Star Wars. Like, every... He's, he's in the, the boys. Everyone wants this guy as their villain. Yeah. All right, that's all I got to say on that. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito, good. Um, who else? Uh... Oh. We got we got we got a new Superman comic. And it's oh, yeah. pretty good. Yeah, I like it a lot. I haven't read it yet. You haven't read I Son of Kal-El? Uh, I don't even read Grown Up, John. Well, I've only read the first issue, and He's I just gotta a say, ten-year-old boy. Fair enough, but John is a damn good Superman. I gotta yeah. say, he embodies everything he stands for, while still being a different Superman. And that's cool. Mm-hmm. Like, like he's like, how, like he did something. He man, did something. but I feel like it's still a bit too soon. I mean, I like that. We're especially. Since I definitely he needs to be Superman for a while because he's really good. Like he did something in this comic that Clark wouldn't do. Like it's not like as a bad thing or anything, but he just he was trying to comfort this dude who was losing control of his power. He's like, "Hi, I'm John." It's really cool. Uh, I love that. Yeah. That's beautiful. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. And he goes to Damien for advice. Maybe, I think it was a lot in your delivery, yeah, favorite. Little... That warned me. Oh. That was really sweet. I mean, mm-hmm. comic. Wow. Yeah. John Kent's already a great Superman. And, you know, I'm excited to, you know, have him, like, have his own villains, have his own story. Like he, like so far, the from what I understand, the books are gonna be more about him adapting, being his own Superman first before he gets, you know, villains. But you I know, want, I want DC to just start throwing out the status quo because they are trying to do everything to leg up on Marvel. I think comic wise, that's what that that's it. Because Marvel, yeah. I'd say more than DC is a bit more stuck to their status quo, just because of how successful the movies are. They. Mm-hmm. They're doing better at it, especially in recent mem- days. But the, my problem is everything always reverts back eventually. Yeah. Because, like, the, you can just see, like, even Infinite Frontier, they says, like, listen, if you, if you like Future State, 
we'll keep it. But if you don't, we'll take it away. That's fine. I'm like, take some risks, man. Come on. Exactly. Because like DC is more willing to be like, okay, we're gonna change this for a while. But Marvel, their bigger characters always go back. So they're like smaller ish characters. Like Ghost Rider's been Cosmic Ghost Rider for a few years, I believe. So stuff like that, they're willing to keep for a while. But like Jane Foster, Captain America, Sam Wilson, they, they those those go away after like a year. Which always disappointed me because, like, I want to see, I want to see Jane yeah. Fox like the like this generation's Thor. Yeah, because like the movie Feige's doing that, like he's you know killing off characters. You can make Sam Wilson Captain America until you know the MCU explodes. Yeah, exactly. But then my issue with that is that's going to become the status quo. And the comics, it, this is my tinfoil hat theory, the comics are going to start reverting to that. I feel like the comics just. At least for Marvel, the comics always very lightly trail the movies. Mm. But DC doesn't really do that because their movies are a mess. Yeah. Which is kind of a positive. <laughs> Fair enough. I feel like DC movies never really, like, are like, at all. They, like, take the character and do whatever with it. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, DC likes to do whole crazy stories, especially stories, like stuff like death metal and all that. And which, right. which, you know, a certain, you know, a couple of weeks ago, DC movie did go completely comic book insane. And it was beautiful. Let's see more of that. Probably, in my, that's why it's one of the best movies they've ever released. Yes. Mm-hmm. We'll be talking about that movie, don't you? Oh, know? yeah. We got a lot of things. God, that movie's sick as hell. <laughs> so good. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yes. All right. Was- now we've got we've gotten to we've narrowed down to the long stuff. All right. So of so, the so how many more things do we have left to talk about? Can I just say uh, I'm really looking at I'm really looking at my list. I don't really know what's in the chat, but all right. Um, I think the quicker one to get in the way is Secret Wars. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because we told them again, Kyle. We told them. They didn't believe us, but we told okay. them. Now, Trey, I do want to put a grain of salt next to that. Because here's what Shooter said. Shooter said Marvel called him up about adapting Secret Wars into a novel, like a regular novel. And Mar- Marvel's like, hey, we also just need the rights to the book so in case we want to do any future adaptations. And he's like, oh, so you're making a movie. And the guy in the other night was like, oh, we can't say. And he was like, I'm pretty sure you already did. I saw the Loki finale. Well, yeah, that is true. But at the same time, this could also just be Jim Shooter reading way too much into it. Yeah, but, you know, at the same time, it's just like he's being honest, you know? Because even if the answer, but even if the answer is no, they can't, they still have to say, I can't say. Yeah. So, but he's like, oh, I already, you just told me, yeah. But in reality, it could just be like, no, we're, this is, legally, I'm telling you what I have to tell you. Yeah. But like so, anyway, like again, like the Loki finale, we like big theory, man. Like Secret Wars, that's happening. What if is a is you know the experiment to see you know which ultra version characters that we like, so we can see them go to war and you know the Marvel multiverse war with Kang and Kang alternates and everything. And then part two is gonna have Doctor Doom and Battle World and Peter Parker's gonna get the symbiote. I think last episode we did we talked about what if for a, not what uh, Secret Wars for a while. So let's not get too deep into it again. But basically, it's a very exciting prospect. So yeah. I really hope that Jim Shooter is right here. Mm-hmm. Speaking of you know that we got we got we got we got new, we got new D plus show. Oh, that was a hot segue. Yeah, and it, it's I mean it's a cute cute show. Yeah, it's like I don't love it like. Like it's it's like listen the first episode they fit they fixed this but the first episode it it made me a little mad because the like you're just you're just up. yeah you're just telling me what happens in a one movie Peggy Carter getting the Super Soldier Serum is very important for the entirety of the MC like what is Civil War still gonna happen are the Avengers gonna be formed or not are they, if they are formed in Civil War do they split up or are they going to stay together if they are staying together is that and does that impact what could happen with against Thanos there was no these things of, and I was as concerned with that I was more concerned with the inconsistencies in the episode itself like when she gets knocked like 50 feet in the air onto the wall of Hydra 
and they just so happen to have a sharpened display sword right there. And also, the moment of her pushing Shumagorath with one hand into the void while telling Steve Rogers about the dance. First of all, you didn't need that sword. You could have done the whole action scene without the sword, and it would have made more sense, because, number two, how the fuck does one Peggy Carter, even with the Super Soldier Serum, even... No one could push Shuma Gorath with one hand. No Girl one. power, that's how. Do you how. know who Shuma Gorath is? Because I don't even think the writers do. I think they said, they said, ooh, we can make Hydra. Get that's it? My, that's my thing. I wish that wasn't Shuma Gorath, because it would have been so much cooler if it was just a Hydra, like an actual like, Greek myth Hydra. And maybe that's me liking mythology. It's just me. But come on. Having Hydra's warrior, warrior be a Hydra would be really cool. Yeah. That's this just me. Yeah, but the first episode was meh. second episode was badass. Oh, I love The second episode was, like, really good. second I episode, they, they did what I wanted. It says, you know, what does T'Challa being in space do the most first? Well, here's what it does. It makes Thanos a good guy. And that's it just funny. Makes, makes the universe objectively better. Yeah, except I want to see what happens with Quill and Ego, which, you know, I guess they're setting up for, you know, a crossover at the end. This is a group shot with Carter and King Killmonger and Gamora, Thanos, and King T'Chaka, or uh, Star-Lord T'Challa. Here's what I loved about this episode. It took T'Challa's core character traits and just put them in a new environment with new characters and new stuff. And it just crafted its own standalone narrative. And it was so good. Yeah. God. Like, yeah, I really, really like T'Challa in this. And here, like, but, here, so, sorry, but one more. You're good. In the first episode, I mean, no shade. None at all. No shade, no tea. No one in that episode could voice act. No. Like, Sebastian Stan was, is, was not good. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Who ordered the calamari? Hey. Well, thanks. Ma- you almost ripped my arm off. <laughs> oh, God. We're going to talk about that soon. Hey, Barn Solo Jeep. Like, God. like, come on! But I mean, the the voice actor for Steve Rock for Steve Rogers was good because he's spectacular Spider Man, and he's always good. Here's my thing with that episode: it's the the moment you just talked about. Hey, you almost ripped my arm off when they were jumping on the um the train that Bucky lost his arm on on the original continuity. He almost falls off immediately, like a dunce, and then Peggy has to catch him. And if you had just done that, it would have been a fun little callback. But then B- Bucky says, <laughs> wow, you almost tore my arm off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get it? Do you get it? Funny, dude. I half expected like Bucky to turn to Karen and be like, you got that? You're like pointing at his eh, arm. Eh, <laughs> eh, <laughs> eh. <laughs> hey, look, it's winter and we're soldiers. What a weird coincidence. <laughs> Not that he said anything. Uh, like I said, it's cute. It's funny. But anyway, yeah, because back to the Star Lord as a child thing. Remember when, you know, after Infinity where we were, we were all hating on Peter Quill because he fucked up and hit Thanos in the face with this blaster? Yeah. Now it's, it's just like, wow, if Star, if Peter Quill just didn't exist, the, the galaxy would be a much better place. The galaxy just, in this was just objectively much better. Trillions in, of people would be alive. Yeah, in pretty much every way. <laughs> Like, yeah, was like this episode. Like, it's like wow. Like you were just one. Si- it really sold me on the concept of like one simple change can change the entire universe. Exactly. Captain- That's what I want this show to be about. Not the the first episode yeah. didn't show me that. Because Captain Carter barely changed anything. It was pretty much just a gender swapped first Avenger. Yeah, which is fine. Like you know, Steve Rogers in Iron Man suit. That was cool. But like, give me more, man. Okay, the I want to see what I want to see what our civil war looks like. Thank you for saying that because the animation in this was a little weird too. The establishing shots, like the ones with, especially the ones with um the the Hydra stopper, were all pretty cool. The action was good. I don't like the character, especially the faces. The faces look weird, especially mm. when. Yeah, Steve Rogers is a little bit of like a turkey neck. It's weird. In. The mouths always look weird. They're trying mm-hmm. to do, like a comic style mixed in with like a real life style, and you can yeah. just kind of tell they're trying to do their own into the Spider Verse, and it's not. Yeah, it's like the look. 
I'm the resident Spider Verse like 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 lover, so I can say it's like don't try and replicate God. You're not gonna do it. <laughs> it's... I would go for your own thing than trying to replicate yeah. the greatest movie of all time. Okay, but uh, also I mean I like the third episode too. Like that was also fun. That was that was fun and not bad. Good yeah. Episode. Episode was fun but pretty bad. Second episode was fun but pretty good. Third episode was fun but it's all right. Yeah. I I mean like I because like I like that it's you know doing a what if of what if this happened in the theory big week that the MCU has and that they kind of made fun of that the fact that all this happens in one week which I find that to be funny and we also get to see what Mark Ruffalo would have been like in you know Incredible Hulk. Well, kind of. They did like a hybrid of his two. Yeah. Also, I just. I like. I didn't see the twist coming. Like that's. Like, yeah. No, that was sick. Cause like again, like while I was watching, I was like damn, anybody in MCU could be is like, oh, it's Hank Pym as Yellow Jacket. That's. I sick. thought it was Loki. I really thought it was gonna be. Loki. I thought. I thought for a half a second it was gonna be Peter Parker, and I was like, nope, he's good. He'd be like twelve at this point. Yeah. Hey, Anarchy. Anyway, um, but yeah, mm. I there was just a, a bit where I was like, wow, like that's my biggest thing in mystery stories. I don't want to know who it is like five seconds in, but, like the yeah. entire. Like, oh, it's Loki. Okay. Well, yeah, this is yeah, this is like a fun. This was a fun mystery episode about who's killing the Avengers. And seeing Nick Fury and Loki team up in an action scene is really cool. Yeah. Right. Just now, I guess, Nick, like we're having a whole new team of Avengers in this universe, which, like, again, with the whole Secret Wars possibility of having different Earths and having been like somewhat introduced to these universes. Well, pretty cool. My big problem with that episode, though, is with the information presented. I kind of agree with Hank Pym ideology wise. Yeah, he's like, like he I understand where he's coming from. He's a little insane and his execution isn't great, but like he's one of those villains, you know. It could it could have been done better if Nick Fury was like, Man, maybe we should not treat our agents as such expendable soldiers. But then he was at when he's being taken away, he was like, No, you're completely wrong, loser. Get fucked. Like he's like, it's not even like okay, like he could have done he could have handled that a little better, but I understand why you want you want to. Yeah. Yeah, it's whatever. It happens. Oh, so I really didn't think Michael Douglas was going to voice Hank Pym if the Hank Pym was going to show up. Yeah, but he did. He also, did. Also, he paper, this, um collector in the second episode. Yeah, a He's lot of actors are coming back. I didn't think, you know, some actors aren't coming back who you think probably would come back, but, you know, some, a lot of actors are. Apparently, Cumberbatch is coming back to play Strange in the next episode, so, you know. Was he it? Wasn't even though it was, it was yeah, it was, it was reported he wasn't, but he is. Yeah, because he's such a big part of this series, or at least he's probably going to be. Yeah, and, like, I saw a clip, and then they said Benedict Cumberbatch is Doctor Strange, and, like, that's him, that's his voice. And, like, if he wasn't in this show, I was going to be so surprised. Like, he loves Doctor Strange. He yeah. loves Marvel. It'd be so weird if he, like, is like, no, I'm going to pass on this one. Yeah, it just warms my heart when, like, actors just so unabashedly love their character. Yeah. John well, C. Like, character is a huge example. But... Yeah, I when I see cool. Evans or Downey not, you know, coming back or or even uh, Scarlett Johansson, I'm not really mad at that to be honest, because I'm like they said their goodbyes to these characters. I don't need them back. They don't need to come back. They're done. Like they, they I'll they, take these. You know, these are fine impressions. They're fine. So I just I like when actors like their characters. So it makes me yeah. happy that they'll come back. Mm -hmm. Who was Captain Marvel in this episode? The I don't know. You know, all right, makes sense. Yeah. She was only had like a line. Yeah, I don't know if Tom's gonna voice Spider-Man universe, but I don't think it's because oh. Tom said no. I he's... think it's because you know Tom does love Spider-Man. I think it's more of a Sony contractual thing. He's also just really busy because he's like one of the most highly anticipated actors right now. Yeah, everyone wants a piece of Tom Holland, including me. But he, it's just everyone wants him, so it's like I kind of get where he's like, I would love to, but I really just legitimately don't have the time. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, fair. You are doing everything. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, I'm yeah. I'm excited for this show. Like, yeah. It, it, it's what, a cute, fun little show. And yeah. I, it's, a, you know, I'm kind of glad that we're getting a show like this right now. Because hearing the last couple of DC Plus MCU shows that, you know, I was, you know, staying up at night thinking about them and theorizing about them. It's just nice that we're just getting a nice, cute little animation. I'm yeah. okay with that. I'm, it's one of those shows, like, if an episode's bad, it's not like, oh, man. It's like, oh, that one kind of, that one, that one kind of blew. Eh, whatever. Yeah. Like, Next it's... episode looks very interesting and very, you know, heartfelt. What if Doctor Strange lost his heart? I love that this show Metaphorically. 
I love that this show is like, okay, we're not canon. We're going to get just really dark sometimes. Yeah. Like, Hank, it's like, okay, um, this isn't canon. How about Hank Pym murdering all the Avengers? Um, Doctor Strange dies in that car crash. Zombies. Like, they're like, we're not canon? Cool. Let's do whatever the fuck we want. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad they are playing it safe. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, do you want to get mad? No, not yet. We're talking about some trailers first. I don't want to get mad yet. I don't want. I want to get mad before the one trailer. And we're not gonna. We're, we won't talk about the one. We'll talk about you know the two other trailers. One of these trailers, I bet you forgot that we didn't talk about like, the last Venom two trailer. Oh, do we have to talk about that one? I mean, Carnage looks cool. That's about all we can really say about it. Yeah, we get a better look at him. I mean, it, just the trailer just showed us more of what we liked from the first trailer and what we hope the movie's going to be about. They renamed Scream to Shriek. She was one of my favorite symbiotes. I don't really know why you had to change that name, but, like, whatever, I guess. Mm. That's it. That's all I have to say. Go on. Do your thing. Do your little dancey dance. Have your shitty poster. Yeah. Yeah. But the movie yeah. looks funny, like we wanted. The movie looks, you know, entertaining. Vet- Scarner looks cool. Venom looks cool. It looks cool. I like it. All right. That's all we have to say about that. Yeah. Do we want to save Eternals for later? Or do you want to talk about it now? I'm just talking about it now. I don't really. I, don't, I mean, is there much to talk about? Because kind of, it was pretty I, similar. Well, we, we got more dialogue and more explanation for the Eternals. We saw the first, our first look at the Deviants, which, you know, I was a little nervous for them because we didn't give much talk about the Deviants. And I was like, are the Deviants going to show up? But, like, you know, we got a good look at them. We got to look at our main villain. You know, we know, you know, they're following the Eternals lore very well. So, you know, here's, here's the movie thing. looks great. That Eternal at the end is Core. It's, this is confirmed. Core, and you probably know Core better than I do because you read the Kirby stuff. Mm-hmm. But Core is in, like, is dating Angelina Jolie's character in, like, a forbidden romance thing. So that yeah. end confrontation between them wasn't like a, I'm going to kill you really hard, girl. It was, it was like, I love you, and I don't want to have to kill you really hard. Yeah. yeah. I mean... Cool. We well, contextualize that scene. Yeah. But, you know, that's going to, you know, make the movie better. Like, and apparently, uh, from at least from what movie I'm... From the, what I'm seeing is that uh, Black Knight's apparently going to be, you know, kind of our... Cole Young, let's call it. Of we see, oh, you know, through right. his eyes, what th- this stuff is about. I really did like the shot we got of him. It was a cool shot. Yeah, yeah. We don't get to see him, which like like really well. Which I'm glad. The same for the movie. Yeah. Um, the action looks good. Yeah, CGI looks great. I'm kind of tired of people comparing Icarus to Superman. They're they are very different characters. Just because they both have heat vision does not make them the same. But he, but he fly. Uh-huh. Icarus, I'm actually very, you know, interested to see because apparently Cersei's going to date uh, Black Knight, and you know the present day time frame of this movie. And they didn't really date Icarus and Cersei didn't date in the Kirby run. But you know, I'm 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 quite interested to see how Icarus is going to, you know, join because him him and Ajax are, I guess, they're trying to get the Eternals back together. And Ajax is my favorite Eternal, and I'm very excited to see what Simon Hike does with that. So, you know. Here's my thing. In the comics, Thanos is a deviant. He has the deviant gene. So he's yeah. deviant. In this, though, they aren't allowed to interfere unless deviants are involved. So what I'm hearing is either A, Thanos isn't a deviant in the MCU, which, whatever, sure, why not? Or yeah. B, they don't know Thanos is a deviant, and one of the Eternals is keeping that from everyone. I some... think it's I think it's Athena for sure. You think Athena? Why? Because one, I, I just feel like people are considering you know Mad Titan Thanos killed half the universe. Thanos, I don't think she wants to keep brand like he's my cousin. Mm-hmm. Who's is Athena the one dating, dating Core? Uh, Angelina Jolie's character, yeah. So yeah, I think that's actually real. That would be really cool because Core is like, Core's like yeah, don't maybe keep that one to yourself, babe. And I think that might be a bad idea. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, it, I know it's probably just that. Oh, he's um, he's just not a deviant. He's just a tiger. yeah. Which it's like whatever. I don't really. I I'm, not, I'm conflict, not heartbroken about it. I think creating conflict within the Eternals would be cool, and that's a really good way to do it. Yeah. How much more to say? It's a damn good trailer. That's like, going to be a damn good movie. Mm-hmm. All right. Glad we agree on this. Shakes her hand. Yeah.
Hmm. All right. Um, is this other uh, anything else to talk about before we get mad? Well, I want to say if you know the stuff, you know the really cool, the final three cool stuff. You know, as my pride and joy after you know I scream for forty minutes. Mm-hmm. So, are we ready to scream for forty minutes? Oh yeah, Bat. Well, let, let let let's quickly talk about Poison Ivy and Batwoman because oh, yeah. good cast. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Sophie, what do you think about it? Just his name. I don't know enough about the actress, but I'm happy that they're introducing um, Poison Ivy into. I'm actually getting to see more Batman villains live that we haven't really seen in live action. Well, we yeah. still really like that version. Yeah, and I'm you know I'm I'm glad we're seeing you know more Batman villains in the CW. I still like that one season two. I do plan on watching it, but you know, I, I do want to see you know more Bat stuff in coming seasons and i do want to see this ver- this universe is bruce wayne and i'll talk about more why when we talk about anger but yeah bridget reagan who's mm. playing poison ivy she was in another dc property i remember seeing it but i don't remember Yeah, that's about all I have to, we have to, I have to say about that. Ready to get mad? Oh, so much. All right. So, la- two weeks ago now, I invited my good, good buddy Trey over for a double feature. We were going to go watch some TV, that, and then we were going to go watch The Suicide Squad. And the TV show we were going to watch is a little show, a little indie show, but it's really bad, called Titans. Mm. Ever heard of it? Oh, Okay. I've I, I've it's I've gotten I've... better. No, it hasn't. No, I'm sorry. No, it hasn't. In my opinion, this is the worst it's ever been. I, I don't want to say it's honestly it's so close to being, but like you, I'm honestly you know what it is the worst it's ever been. I I've I've hated things that they've done this season so much, and we're only five episodes in. I can we talk about like the big big thing they got wrong? Yes. First thing, it's yeah, that and so much more. <laughs> that that made Trey throw his hat across my face multiple times. But you know but that here. was the big one. That yes. made like a cracking sound. Yes, let let's please let's start with the first episode. And I don't know how you can ruin everything Batman stands for in forty minutes, but the but they did it. They did it. <laughs> oh. Qu- quick thing. <laughs> Trail of Bruce Wayne and Titans, but... Quick thing, this is the director in me, but while they were all standing in the Batcave, I paused, and I just went up to my TV and pointed at random things in the background and kept asking Trey what the fuck everything was. <laughs> the set design is so It's dumb. awful. Every- you got a chance to design the Batcave, and you don't do anything with it. You have a hologram <laughs> dinosaur and Penny. You have stuff shoved in a cabinet. This is so lame. Like, but like, in like the like computer room, there's things in the background, and it just you can't even tell what they do. And it's like, oh, it's mysterious. Oh, you don't know what they do. No, it just raises more questions than answers. Why is there like a film reel on one thing? Why is that microwave glowing blue? Why is everything glowing blue? I'll talk about more about the blue in a second because Kyle didn't watch. Kyle hasn't watched episodes four and five, and I have. Okay, here's my thing though. Why does he have the dinosaur and Penny? Because in the comics, those are like really big stories. Those are mementos. They're he mementos. Those... It doesn't make any sense for them to be holograms. It's fe- it feels like you just want to put them in as fan service, but you're too edgy for a big dinosaur. But it really just raises more questions than answers. Batman loves dinosaurs. Give him a goddamn dinosaur. That's gonna be my year- that's gonna be my senior quote. <laughs> Batman loves dinosaurs. Give him a goddamn dinosaur. Anyway, you know that was that that was the back cave set design. That was a little thing. Let's talk about the neat the neat and gritty of you know what what they did with this. Hockey so duck. yes, they do. And Duff, and you know well, anyway, here I'll just you know really spiel about Hawk and Duff. Hawk dying is very cool. 
Hawk dying, you know, was a very, you know, big wow moment. Granted, I, yeah, I want we, all of these characters to die, but I whatever. Remember, we, we legitimately weren't expecting that. We were like, totally yeah, it was like, oh, wow, they're, they're going to, okay. Is, I feel so much no tension. It's like, oh, wait, they actually killed him off. Okay, yeah, cool. But apparently they're going to bring him back, so. Yeah, of him. Like, he's definitely going to. No, yeah, no, he's yeah. he's yeah he's apparently filmed scenes with the actor for Tim Drake. So you know, in four the last four episodes of Titans, Donna has died, Jason has died, and Hawk has died, and they're all gonna come back to life. Don't Trey, how good are these steaks? Oh, they're so good. They're 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 delicious, man. These steaks, they're beautiful. I love them. Also, Dove just left the show. By the way, after you know she basically killed Hawk. You know, giving her a great opportunity for some character and, you know, some very heartfelt, dark moments. She just leaves the show. Also, here's another thing. Again, I what, a big pet peeve in, in, for me in shows is when stuff raises more questions than answers. So, like, Hawk is – the heartbeat is count, his, his countdown, right? Mm-hmm. Why does Duff start having sex with him? Does yeah, he, that's, not gonna, that's, that's, yeah, that's not gonna calm him down. I mean, we saw the Incredible Hulk. Remember that scene where you know uh, Bruce Banner and Betty Ross couldn't have sex because it was gonna raise Hulk's heartbeat. Yeah, sex raise. Well, look, I'm not an expert or anything, but <laughs> as much as I appear to be, but it raises your heartbeat a considerable amount. <laughs> anyway, again, those are little things. Some tiny little things that just annoy us a little bit. Let's talk about the garbage. Let's talk about how how Bruce has a file of Robin candidates. Wow. The Easter egg machine. That annoyed me because that never happens in the comics. Like, the kids seek out him. He doesn't seek out them. It's mm-hmm. not even that. It just tells me how much Bruce doesn't give a shit about his sons. Bruce literally, like, I'll get, get into this later because Kyle doesn't, hasn't seen the Jason Tide episode, and I'll go into that a little bit later. But Bruce literally, after Jason dies, Bruce is just cleaning his bl- the suit's blood in the Batcave, and he's just, and Dick comes in, expecting Bruce to be all, you know, broken up in tears, and Bruce's like, no, nah, I'm okay. Life goes this, on. This is where my favorite quote from this episode comes. The whole series. Like, Dick is like, oh, do, do, do you care about Jason Tide? He's like, oh, life goes on. We had to pause for a second. We were like, oh my god, he did not just say He that. did not. Batman did not just say, I don't care about my children. Life goes you know, on. That is such a... Wow. That's... Oh my god. Can you imagine, like... Oh, what's a good example? Um, Imagine Scott Snyder's Batman saying that. <laughs> Can you imagine that text panel? Imagine in oh. Young Justice... After yeah. Bruce, after Bruce pours out to Wonder Woman, you know why? I mean, why he took in Dick Grayson when Wonder Woman was like, "Oh, you took Dick Grayson in so he could turn out like you," and Bruce like, so that he wouldn't. And then imagine if after that Wonder Woman went, "What about Jason Todd?" and he went, "Oh, life goes on." Yeah, I don't care about him. It's yeah. just, oh my, oh, <laughs> I can't even formulate how much this angers me. Bruce wants these people, wants his children to be better than him. Batman's whole existence hinges on the fact that he cares about life. He never wants anything bad to happen ever. That's a losing war, but he's going to try his damnedest. Him just being all lackadaisical and not giving a shit that his son died. And also, apparently, he doesn't care that Alfred's dead or that his Jim Gordon's that, you know, the person, he, the Alfred, for one, you know, being the, his father and the person that, he, that raised him. Gordon, you know, the per- first person to, you know, accept him and allow him into his mission and help him stop the city. His best friend, Batman, doesn't care. Life goes on. <laughs> Trey, you're forgetting. Life goes on. Life goes on. And uh, apparently Bruce just has a file full of Robin candidates. Oh, but guys, no, no. He's lonely. Bruce but, is lonely. But, but, he needs a, he needs a friend, guys. He needs a friend. The Easter eggs. Oh, yeah. Kane, Carrie Kelly, Stephanie Brown, Daxton Chill, Duke Thomas. Oh, my goodness. Daxton Chill was a weird one. Yeah, that was like, I was like, okay. Which is. Storyline? Yeah. Yeah. But again, these are Easter egg. These are Easter egg pieces of shit. And it's just. And Bruce is just going to be like, do you want to be Robin? Listen. 
I have to understand for what this show is trying to do, but they're doing it so wrong. If you want to tell me Bruce is lonely, he's been lonely. He's 60 in the show. He's been lonely since he was 10 years old, basically. He gets a family so he can feel whole again. Him just finding kids, that's not making a family. You're abducting children. That's what you're doing. You are abducting children. You are drafting these people into war, which is what All-Star Batman and Robin did. That's exactly who this Bruce is. He's the, he's the psychopath in All-Star Batman and Robin. People have been complaining about for years. But he's like, oh, guys, we're going to adopt, you know, the goddamn Batman who goddamn swears and has sex with Black Canary while people are burning behind them. Life goes on. Life goes on. And know it, let's get to the end of the episode because, my gosh, golly gee, Bruce, after Dick Barbara no, basically... language. Oh, my God. After Bruce and Barbara basically convince Bruce to kill the Joker, because, granted, I do, I halfway like what they put in head. Bruce and jo- Batman and Joker, you know, their war destroying Gotham, destroying people in it. That's an interesting take. I, however, don't believe any of it because I haven't seen this Joker. I haven't seen how this Bruce reacts to Joker. I haven't seen this Bruce in a bat suit. I haven't Spoiler. seen how Bruce is back as on Gotham. So why do I? So why do I believe that Bruce and Joker's relationship tears apart the city? I believe in the comics. That's a very interesting take to go for. But in this show, it doesn't make any sense. So Bruce is so Bruce, so Barbara and Dick basically convince Bruce to go kill the Joker, and so he beats him in the head with a crowbar. I'm actually not mad about that. I'm actually not mad that Bruce, that Bruce uh, kills the Joker for Jason. If he cared about Jason, I would have believed that in this universe. That's a very interesting take. If J- Batman kills the Joker, what happens to Jason Todd? Oh, no, wait. He still becomes Red Hood? What? Since, what you, you, brought it up, since you brought it up for the record, it's cool they cast an actual disabled actor for uh, Barbara Gordon. I think Again, cool. the casting in, in this show is on paper brilliant. These actors are doing a fantastic job. The writing is horrifying. There's a scene in, see- in episode four that I, I watched out of context about Jason and Bruce, like, talking about, like, oh, you're still my son. And I was like, wow, not knowing the context of this episode, that's a great scene. And, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that more of that in a second, why it's why they're great actors and have great chemistry, but the scenes don't make any sense. But anyway, I don't, I, I'm not mad that Brett Bruce killed the Joker. I'm not angry. What I'm angry about is that he doesn't care about Jason, so I don't believe him killing the Joker is anything but an excuse for just him to murder somebody. And two, why on God's green earth does Jason become Red Hood if Batman killed the Joker? Did you did they did they not read under the Red Hood? Did you under do you do you understand that the, the why Jason becomes Red Hood? He doesn't become Red Hood because Bruce didn't save him. care about Jason, but he doesn't want to show it. Like, he's doing his movement inside. And he thinks no, that I, he, like, doesn't have to, like, feel the emotions. See, but I don't believe that. I can't because he's not, you know, because it's just, even in BBS, Robin dying just, he goes so different. Him being lackadaisical and uncaring and just unemotional, I don't believe any of it that's that's my main thing i just i can't believe if i'm supposed to mourn this character's death and not see a father figure care for his child why do i care about the death that's my thing anyway back back to back to my piece on red hood like i get like i'm upset too how they changed the origin of red hood and it should have taken a lot longer like, I like how they kept in where, like, um, he was still sort of, like, Ghazal um, but he annoyed me, uh, how he became Red Hood so fast, um, and the juicing. It's, 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 it's not even, it's not just that. For me, it's just, I don't think the show understands why Jason is Red Hood. It's not that Bruce didn't save him, it's not that he's dead, it's because... When he died, he felt Bruce didn't care. He felt he didn't love him. He felt that Bruce not killing the joke since Bruce since Jason died, he Br- Jason thought Bruce loved him. And if that if anything bad happened, then Bruce would have crossed that line. That he he thought that he mattered more than Bruce's moral code. That's why he became Red Hood because Bruce didn't kill the Joker, but Bruce killed the Joker. So by all Jason's points, Bruce cares about Jason. 
why is Jason murdering people? Murdering, not just mur murdering innocent people. I don't care if he's being, you know, manipulated by the scarecrow. He's not under my control or anything. That, that fear juice, that is not my control. That is helping Jason and by all his counts. That is inhabiting what Jason has inside of him. That's not doing any, it's just. <laughs> Uh, life goes on. Life does go on. Anyway, what's what's the else is in these episodes that makes me angry? Because I, I kind of just went on my Batman rant, and that's what's been going on there. And it's also the fact that Jason, you know, came back, and Bruce just won't. That's another thing why I don't believe Bruce cares about Jason because Jason's alive and Bruce just isn't here. Yeah, I I don't like how Batman just left Gotham without anyone to t take over the city because he fired Robin and Barbara Gordon is the commissioner. So no Batgirl, no Robin. So if he just left the city while the Joker was roaming free, Batman would do that? Exactly. He asked Dick to take over for him. Well, he had fired like, him. He but, well, even... I, I don't think he did, though, because even if Bruce said... If, if, Dick, if Dick said, no, I can't go to God at this point, Bruce is still not going to leave to go to London while when he just fired Jason, leaving the city unprotected. The Joker out for months. And Bruce, is, Bruce even the show even showed this, that Bruce will be, would have been gone for a week between where he says, hey, Jason, I'm going to London, to him coming back and Jason dying. So Bruce is just going to leave Gotham for a week unprotected when the Joker is around? Life goes on, except not for Jason Todd. His life stopped. But for everyone else, life goes on. Jason came back. He went and he went in a blue Lazarus pit and came back. It's been green in literally every single adaptation under the sun. Why couldn't you just made it? Because the show loves its blue, Kyle. <laughs> it loves irks. its blue. I don't know why that irks me so much. Like, why couldn't you have been green? What's wrong with green? Because Titans loves its blue. It loves it. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, uh, what else? Um, episode, well, here, we're, we're, the Jason episode, because, listen, Ian Glenn, and what's the actor's the name for Jason? I can't remember. Curtis something. Uh, Kern Walters. Kern Walters. They are great actors. They have great chemistry. However, their scenes together, I don't believe, the, the writers of this show aren't talking to each other, because the first episode, Bruce doesn't care about Jason. That, that's what they're telling me. And this episode, oh, Bruce is calling Jason's son. That's that's completely different to what that episode is. Bruce didn't care when Jason died, but you're calling him son? Oh, okay. And apparently, you know, Jason's, you know, like, listen, if Jason had like a Roy Harper or Karen Page, you know, heroin arc, I believe he'd go to Scarecrow for a fix. But now you're telling me that, again, you're telling me that Titans are heroes? They, they, they made this kid go to a supervillain because of how much of a dick they were to him. So they, he could get off his fear fix. He was he had PTSD and he wanted to fix himself because the Titans gave him PTSD. So, but like, I still, I'm not on Jason's side though, still, because he betrayed Bruce by doing so. I understand that Bruce fired him, which again, if it, it's also just, Bruce, why did you send him to Leslie Tompkins if he was going to fire him anyway? It's just also, again, Leslie Tompkins is too young. And the fact that Jason had, Jason was like, dude, Leslie Tompkins is hot. Did you ever have sex with her, Bruce? And Bruce did, just insinuated that they did. Leslie Tompkins. That just feels so un -Batman. It's icky. Like, Batman in the comics would be like, don't, like, be like, wouldn't even say anything. He'd just turn around. Like, that'd be a very Batman moment. It's and gross. So Leslie Tompkins is Bruce's mother, basically. Yeah. What the? But nah. This Batman's like, yeah, I fucked that girl. It's like, that's not Batman. Oh my god. Just. Uh, and also, when Jason becomes Red Hood, he, you know, helps the, his friend out that we were introduced first. So first time we've earned, because apparently this is Jason's best friend. We don't know, we've never met, heard her mentioned before or anything. It's also just, you know, and apparently he helps. He's like, oh guys, Red Hood's heroic, but he's, but he's killing innocent people. I'm working with a scarecrow. What am I supposed to feel about Red Hood, guys? 
Am I supposed to be happy when he event- is going to eventually become good and get his own show? Is that what I'm supposed to feel? I don't. I just I don't feel any good emotions from the show. Yeah, it's also like again. All I have are negative thoughts. It's just man, I it's it's hard. It's really hard. Like I have so much like other things to say, but I honestly forgot them because God, this show. Well, life goes on. Yes, it does. And also, oh. you know, cons- my last my last thing about Titans. Considering we've all just, you know, talked about, you know, the Bat family, and we're not talking about the Titans, we've run into the problem again. Which one? The problem of this is a Bat family show and not a Teen Titans show. Oh, God, yeah. I still, I'm still so proud of how I duped you into summarizing how you thought the season three finale would go, and you're not, oh, not mentioning any Titans. That's like my proudest moment on this podcast. That's fair. That's fair. Cause it's true. That, that's it's gonna happen. Like, guys, we just got introduced to Blackfire, and she's not. She's not gonna do. Yeah, wasn't she just, anything? She, she, wasn't she just chilling in the cell? No. Yeah, she was in the cell because I I was confused. But and. Apparently in court, she was just she just yelled. Is she at, supposed to be the villain in second half? Yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll see because Corey just let her out of her cell. She's supposed to be the villain. Yeah, after you know, Blackfire just said, "Oh, uh, you're you you made me this way. I hate you." Corey was just like, "Oh, I'm gonna let her out now." <laughs> what? The, this is, what, what this is, you're just gonna let her out of her cell when you know she's murdered people? Because you feel like you've been a bad sister. Fine. Okay. Whatever. All right. To the, pe- to the people who all get murdered because of her in the second half of this season, I'm blaming you, Starfire. This is your fault. The time's about to kill more people. All right. Are, are you finally ready to move on? Yeah. Anyway, uh, Titan Season 3, 10 out of 10. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Right. So, uh, what's next? I, I got I to trifecta here, Kyle. So we want to talk about uh, that that one really good Superman show, that Obviously. one trailer that one trailer been waiting for for a while, or that one movie that was really good. Let's go Superman show movie trailer. Okay, you. Know I'm glad we started because I was just talking about a DC show I hate, and a D, and now we're gonna talk about a DC show that I have an undying passion for. Because my God, okay, I love. Are you caught up? No, he's not. You're not gonna like my answer. Kyle, what have you seen? What? I see it to like episode three. I'll, I see it to like episode three. In my defense, I had a very. You've busy had a, all summer. I had a very. He's busy garbage, summer. Sophie. He's garbage. He doesn't appreciate good television. I had a very busy I summer. Just to catch up. I okay. Will... One day. You might want to cover your ears because I will spoil. Text me when I can come back. Okay. Like, I don't care. I will be talking about it. So I'm guessing he's gone. So spoilers Whoa. ahead. Yeah, this show, this yeah. show was perfect. So um, it, what do you think? Think of Natalie. Um, she's going to be a very interesting character for season two. So- um, she's been promoted to, or her actress has been promoted to regular for season two. Mm-hmm. Um, the head writer, the guy in charge, basically said, um, it's not going to be too much of a repeat of season one, where, like, she's not going to try and kill Superman. Maybe. It's going to be explaining a lot of stuff to her about what that Earth is like and the differences. For example, yeah. that Lois Lane is not her mother. So, which, um, and as we saw in the finale, Lois was tearing up a little bit when she saw Natalie. Well, because yes, be- considering you know, the, some of the child that she lost. yeah, which you know, I'm very excited to see you know how that's gonna work for Lois's side, for you know, how these brothers now have a sister, for you know, how Natalie has a mom that she lost, but it's not really her mom, it's just, I don't know, because like, I hope that you know, they're definitely gonna add more to the season, obviously, but you know. It's interesting. Uh, 
that John is not going to get his powers yet? I, please, no. If, if John gets powers, it ruins it for me. I'm sorry. Because it's just him not having powers. It's what makes him fit into this show for me. Because him just straying with John Henry Irons, becoming more of a, you know, a tech-savvy guy, you know, being more of a, I'm just going to say, call him a mechanic in a way. It's just him not having powers that makes him, I feel he fits in with his family. He just, he's there for his brother with powers. He doesn't need powers. He doesn't even really want powers. It's just, you know, he's that son. It's really similar to Supergirl. Um, with Kara and Alex's relationship, where Kara's on the powers and Alex isn't. I don't know. I would love to see John eventually get some form of power. It just... Yeah, it's just like, again, like, if this show's gonna do it well... If this, like, yeah, if this show's gonna do it well, then yeah, I, I will accept John having powers, because I trust the writers of this show completely because they made a great live action Superman adaptation which is something I've been begging for for so long but you know it was it was it was per it was perfect man I'm like come on I love this show some this show rekindled my love for Superman this show made me love that that stupid boy scout again and his family and his boys and his wife I love all of them I love every character in this show even the ones I hate, I love them. Like I'm gonna go off on this show, man, because this show, weirdly enough, takes beats from every Superman adaptation ever, even the bad ones. But they put the stuff that I didn't like in the bad Superman movies and make them good. They weirdly enough take two, my two two of my favorite things in this show are plot points that are very similar to Man of Steel, Man of Superman. My first thing is that in Man of Steel. It just the show like it's. I'm not gonna say it makes the movies worse per se. It doesn't make me like it as much because this show did come after come after, and sure Zach probably didn't think of these, but it just makes me like this stuff more because in Man of Steel, Clark is given a choice, us or them, and he chooses us. He destroys Zod's ships. He breaks Zod's neck, which it's fine for the context of that movie in a way, but this show shows me like uh. His brother makes a very, you know, clear-cut case, us or them. And Clark says, there is no us or them. That's beautiful. He doesn't want to say, he doesn't, he wants to save everybody. That's what he wants. He's Superman. He wants to save the home he never knew and the home he has. That's beautiful. I love that. And one of my, like, my top three favorite scenes of this show is when John Henry Iron spares Clark's life. When he, because that is basically the same scene as the Martha scene in BVS, except I believe this scene because in the Martha scene, I don't care that Bruce Wayne has humanity. I don't care. I don't believe that he would spare Superman if he believed Superman had a mother. And this, because actually one of my big things, I feel like I even said this on this podcast. I was a little disappointed at first that John Henry Irons didn't know that that Clark Kent was Superman and that he was married to Lois Lane when he hated Superman. I expected him to be like. Oh, he's my the person I hate the most is married to the person I love the most. That's heartbreaking to me. But no, when he finds out Clark Kent is Superman, that he is Lois Lane's, you know, husband, that is the, that is to help Jeremy to show that Superman is a man. He is human. He has boys. He has people who cares about him. He is he it, theoretically they are the same. He understands what Clark cares about. Because he has a daughter, he knows what it feels like. He knows what it's feel like to lose someone, and he doesn't want to take that away from the woman, from a different version of the one he loved most, and her boys. That's beautiful. I love it. I can, I believe John Irons wouldn't kill Superman when Superman was basically almost pleading with him to kill him because he was mind controlled and he was Superman was terrified what would happen if he lost control. But John Irons was like, no, fight. You have boys. You have people who love you. You have people who need you. That's good shit. I love it. It's Superman. And... God, what a show. More theories about stuff that I want to happen in season two. First, Natalie Irons to possibly get her own steel suit. Probably. 
Paul. Um, also, um, I'm pretty sure the actor who plays Jonathan, Jordan Osos, has stated he would love to see Tom Welling come on the show, whether it be a new character or if he plays on, like, Smallville Clark again. Um, but I would love to see Tom Welling play Mr. Oz. Like, like Jorel, Mr. Oz? Yes. I don't really see that where it's like that's another scene that I did like was Clark burying the fragments of uh uh Jorel that he you know he had in this work of solitude that Edge destroyed. I thought that was you know a very touching scene. I if Tom if Mr. Oz was not Jorel, I could see Tom Welling doing it. But it's just I I don't really see that. Miss, like Mr. Oz, if it's not Jarrell, I don't want them to change that part of the character because it's such an important part to Mr. Oz and why he cares about Superman so much. Not like will do this in the future. I'm just saying, like, here's who I would want to play because DC loves bringing in old actors who've played characters previously. Shows. Yeah, I don't. Mm. I mean, Tom Welling coming back could be cool. I just, I don't know. I don't really see how much he would fit in. But again, if this show wants to do it, by all means, I trust you with my life because you gave my life back to Superman and I love him again. That's beautiful. Like the first, basically, the first scene in this show is this is Superman just saving a kid from a car, giving him his hat, saying, Here you go, friend. And saying, my mom made me this suit. That's beautiful. That's Superman. And even that one episode where it's a flashback of him, just, you know, his, like early as a Superman, falling in love with Lois, just him, you know, prancing around, having a, just a sit down interview with Lois about how much he loves humanity. That's beautiful. That's Superman. This show answers the question that everyone's been asking, that the characters of this show ask, how the villains of this show ask. How even DC asks, is asking this question because they don't know the answer. I've seen what they've been doing with Superman on screen. They don't know the answer to the question. And the question is, why? Why does Superman save us? Why does he care about us? And this show answers that question because they know the answer. He saves us because he loves us. He sees the best in us. He loves Lois Lane because he sees Lois Lane as the best man he has to offer. It's, it's his reflection on human. He loves Lois because he loves humanity, and he loves humanity because he loves Lois. That's beautiful. And he sees that in his boys, too. He's there for his boys. When I see them, when I see John, Jordan, and Clark just screaming in the air after Jordan punches a log, that's it's beautiful. It's so good. And even the side characters that I did think I would like, like Lana and Kyle and the Langs and, like, I love them too because they're just heartbroken characters and they're beautiful and I love them and this show is too good. Anyway, yeah. Comments? Back. We could bring him back. He needs to watch the show. You guys done? Yes. Watch Superman Lois, Kyle. It's perfect. I have so many shows I need to watch. I, I don't care. You got, it, this, this show is like, what, 14 episodes? It's fine. It's it's too good. It's it's it's, it's Superman. It's Superman the way he should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll like, listen, it. Tyler Holshin is, like, tied for first. Like, I don't know if he's first or second. He's... He's with the four Superman, okay? He's up there with the, with Reeves, with animated series, with all of them. I love him. Yeah, you could be up there with these nuts. All right. I'm going to... Oh, he's going to be at Dragon Con along with Tom Welling, and I will be seeing both of them. Oh, lucky. Tell me how Dragon Con is this year. I tried snagging tickets, but I wasn't able to go. 
Yeah, I'm out of town, so I can't go. But tell Tyler Holchin he's perfect. He's doing a good job, and please keep, please play Superman until you die. All right. Um, are we gonna talk about that one movie that came out? We can, we can, you know, you know that that one, 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 that one film. Uh, Sophie, have you seen the movie? Stuffy. All right. All right. Might just be might just be me and you, Trey. Oh, are you kidding me? Trey's gone too. Oh, the nah. <laughs> no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I was gonna. I was gonna. Die. All right. Horrible. That's cool. Have you seen Suicide Squad? Sorry, we are, we're not really able to hear you. At least I'm not. I don't know about Trey. And Trey's muted again. Damn it. Okay, perfect. All right, first of all, we're just going to start. Let's start just non-spoilers, not talking about any of the certain characters who may have died. Maybe no one died. Probably. probably. What Overall, what did you guys think of the movie? Um... It was it was it was beautiful. It was, I loved it. In my opinion, this is my favorite DC movie just ever. I think this movie was fan fucking fantastic. It was so insane. Mm-hmm. It was James Gunn at his James Gunniest. Mm-hmm. I love these horrible people. Again, James Gunn just loves to be like, hey, you know these D-list characters that are by on basis not the best people? Yeah, we're going to make you love them. Yay, you know the lamest DC villain of all time, Polka Dot Man? We're going to make you fall in love with this piece of garbage. A lot of people don't really take it for granted, but it's hard to make you love ridiculous characters like that. So it's really, I really commend Gunn for not even, it's not even an ironic, oh, ha ha, fun me. It's like no, he's legitimately a very likable, lovable character. Like I love, I love every single one of these people, and I'm heartbroken when well, some of them not turn. All, not all of them. There's one character I really hated, but you were supposed, you're supposed to hate her. Is, is probably, her name? A, is it Amanda Waller? Yeah, you're supposed to hate her. Well, yeah, but like you know, Viola Davis, you know, is doing it perfectly. Like everybody does such a good job. No bad actors. No, like Our, I think we can't really talk about this movie without spoiling it. So let's get into spoilers. Um, Kyle, I feel like we all owe you an apology. Yes, you fucking do, <laughs> bitch. Like, listen, I really didn't think Rick Flag had a chance of biting it, but you know so what? That Rick Flag would die, and Trey was like, "He's not gonna die. I promise you, he won't die." And then I, in the theater, when he gets stabbed, his motherfucking heart. I turned to you, I turned to you, and the face you gave me was just, it, oh my god, it was amazing. Like, I just felt so powerful. Yeah, it was my fifth time seeing it, and Kyle's first time seeing it when we saw it together. And I was just like, damn it, when Flag's gonna die, me and Kyle are gonna give each other a look, and he's gonna be like, I told you, piece of shit. Bitch. Ah, uh, that's just, you, you feel that, Trey? Feels like being right. Yeah, and you know what? I'm glad you're right, because Flag Dying was one of my favorite scenes in the movie, because Peacemaker is my favorite character, because I hate him, and I love him at the same time. Like, uh, John Cena is so good for this role. God, I've seen John Cena play a lot of characters. This is the ultimate John Cena role. He's mm-hmm. funny, he's serious, he, sees, he makes liberty as an excuse to do terrible things. That's such a good character flaw, and it's so cool. <laughs> Such an amazing... It's a character that you could play super seriously or super funny. It's just... Oh, I like it. It's just a fun character. Just a, It's taking... It's like an evil Captain America. It's so fun. Yeah, it's also like, you know, Gunn does something in this movie that he does, like, sometimes in other movies, but he really did in this movie. He does stupid jokes 
as like character moments. Like we even made fun of, you know, the bag of dicks on a beach scene on this podcast. He's like, he's not going to use that, but he did use it in the movie. And it's actually a really important scene because it, after he says, it's like, I'll suck every, I'll eat every single dick on this beach for Liberty. And Bloodsworth's like, you know what? I think you use Liberty as an excuse. I was like, well, okay, you're taking, you're making a cringy comedy bit and making it an actual, you know, big character beat that I believe and understand. Also, James, the comedy was also just on point. Like, yeah. I, well, I think my favorite joke from him is like, I'm like, no one likes to show off. Yeah, except when they're showing off, he's dope as fuck. Like, that was just funny. I, I like yeah. that. And both of them are like, fuck, it's true. However, that scene is funny. What I don't like is now I'm seeing memes of people being like, no one likes Batman killing Snyder fans, except what he's killing is really cool. He's like, that's true. I'm like, no, Batman killing just isn't cool. Okay, my favorite part of this movie was when Polka Dot Man is defeating Starro, like put, doing some pretty good damage, and just yelling, I'm a superhero. <laughs> if you know me, you know my number one favorite thing in media is like inspiring moments and like rally cries. I love a good, a damn it, like heartwarming, inspiring moment. And then that damn Starro hand crushes him. And Trey can probably remember this. I jumped out of my seat and like I flood my arm out, like like reaching out to him. It's like, God, like no. Oh, oh God. John, uh, John really knows how to make you care for a character. Yeah. It's just like. He even said that uh, he was like, "Dude, I I, I chose Polka Dot because I looked up dumbest DC character, saw Polka Dot Man, and was like, I'm gonna make people love you, you piece of shit. I'm, I'm I mean, want, God damn it. I want a sequel just to see Kite Man. Literally, yeah. Me. Honestly, I mean, to be fair, he only didn't use Kite Man because Tom King made Kite Man cool. Like Tom, yeah, Tom King made like him like unironically really cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Still, like." God, all the care we haven't even talked about Ratcatcher yet. Yeah, she was she was the heart and soul of this movie. Like this, she actually, what her monologue about uh, her dad was one of my favorite uses of something like that because flashbacks in movies can suck. They really can because I think a lot of flashbacks take away from good acting. I feel yeah. like if you show a flashback and say having a character describe you know what the moment was like, it's a very missed opportunity. But Gunn does both. He has Ratcatcher 2 like, explain in great detail what her father meant to her and what happened to him while showing in a dirty bus window what's happening. That's great visual storytelling and great acting. Yeah. Beautiful. And one we'll other character we haven't touched on yet that we really need to? I mean, all of them? Num num. I want to give that Pete son of a bitch a hug. God, I, he's adorable. I love him so much. I'm like, Sly, I love you. I love you again. You've you've inspired me. You've made me happy. I I I want to give King Shark a hug. Every time he is now, and I see a bird, I'm just gonna grab my phone, act like it's a comic, go bird. He's just moments like that. Even the weirdly enough, King Shark has a good character arc too. His whole thing is he's a lost. He's a he's not. Nah, here's exactly who he is, and I have dogs, so I can you know understand this. He's King Shark's whole character is that when you like you're going to a restaurant, you're going out of town, and you leave your dogs at home, and your dogs are really sad that they're not bringing you with bringing them with you. That's what King Shark's whole character is: a puppy left at home, and him just sitting in that bus crying every. <laughs> like, dude, I get I get a little misty eyed every time I see this man sad. Like when he was like new dumb friends, and then his friends eat him. I saw someone on on Twitter going, you know, he never saw a uh, Rick Flag die. He probably doesn't even know his friend is dead. I'm like, why would you say that? Why, why like, would you even? Why, why would you? How die? how dare what's you? Wrong what's wrong with you? You you you, you garbage person. I hate you. Bloodsport also was so good. It's like they took That's everything the wrong with Deadshot in the first two episodes. Like, here's how you do it right. Mm-hmm. And actually, oh my god! Like I said, I like inspiring moments. That moment where they all turn around, knowing they're probably gonna die, and walking towards Sorrow, and he's just, just like, because it's the right thing to do. That's my secret kink. 
I love shit like that. Bloodsport's just like, fuck. Turns around, grabs his nanotech. He's like, okay, let's go kill a giant starfish. That's another thing, too. This movie's ridiculous. It knows it is. That first, like, big shot of Starro, it's so, it's such a funny shot. It's a comedic shot, and it's an intentional comedic shot. It's a giant, just think of Starro stretching and screaming. And it's a Suicide Squad versus Starro the Conqueror. That's I, so cool. I love when movies aren't embarrassed to be comic book movies. It's why I'm kind Most of comic annoyed book with movie. This is the most comic book comic movie ever. This show is every bit of a. This movie has every bit of a comic thing ever. Like even the Harley Quinn like little side story, it doesn't overstay its welcome, and it's kind of a tie-in issue when you think about it. It's like when you're reading a long six-issue story, you there's one tie-in issue in the middle of issues two and three. That's what the Harley Quinn part was. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's not too long. It gives Harley a quick little character arc, a little bit about her moving on from the Joker, and how you know. Having all of those transitions and having just the general plot structure really makes it feel like you're like you're staying up late at night reading a trade. Like it just uh, it's it goes it's, issue by issue and it's just the characters just felt so right. It just felt it, this movie's so vibey. It's like, also I would hundred percent believe, especially from that uh the rest from the bar scene, we'll call it. That these characters are friends. I believe they like each other. I believe they're close to a family. And there's even a joke that Harley doesn't know Bloodsport's name. And I still believe that these characters love each other more than the first Suicide Squad and Titans. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. They don't, they could have easily just done like the shot of Bloodsport hanging on Rick Flagg's arm. Because that's like a fun friend thing. But they do that they know that wouldn't have been enough, so they do little moments like the peacemaker, like being like, "Hey, we forgot the rat." Like, stuff oh. like that. Okay, okay, cute shit on. like that. Little moments are what makes you believe relationships. Just the big moments, like like the crying in each other's arms. You would a good relationship is based upon those little in a movie. A good relationship in a movie is based upon small moments supplemented by the big moments, and this movie understands that perfectly. That's just them acting like fools together, dancing on the dance floor is perfect. But anyway, let's let's talk about that peacemaker who says, "Hey, you forgot the rat scene," because that scene. Because have you rewatched Suicide Squad yet? Yes. Is that that scene breaks your heart now, doesn't it? Yeah. Be- because you understand that in a uh, like thirty to forty minutes later, peacemaker's gonna pull a gun on a rat catcher. Uh huh. That's then, it. That, the most it makes me so sad. Oh yeah, then it has the cool ass bullet shot, and oh my yeah. god, that's that's how you do it. Even though there's a one, it's like a one, in, literally a one in a billion chance of that happening. Like there's a World War II museum actually that has like a two collided bullets because it's just so rare that like even if you try to line it up, you pretty it never happens. I mean, to be fair, there's a, there's you know a whole you know scene about you know the bullets touching each other, and you know <laughs> these are two of the best marksmen in the DCU. Yeah, so, you yeah, know. yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. But still, just, it's just, just like, bull- again, the movie makes fun of itself because, you know, Amanda Waller describes Peacemaker and Bloodsport basically in the same way, saying that, damn, we got a lot of the same characters in the universe. Let's make fun we of that. We haven't touched on any of Team One yet. Well, that's because, I mean, they had a great opening scene and immediately established the tone by Here's killing all of them. You know me. You know I love Pete Davidson with all my heart. And, God, yeah, they kill him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, the they, is, he got like three different really funny moments before he died. That's all I need. He got really yeah, that's good. Fine. Like especially that moment where like he was like fake reaching for the gun, and like see that that's that's funny. That was really funny. And like it, like the werewolf. Thing. I got what I wanted. He got to yeah. die early, and I got funny Pete Davidson shit. It's a win win. But it's just that scene, that war scene, immediately establishes the new tone. Yeah, it establishes yeah. this movie is comedic with its violence it is violent this ain't your daddy's suicide squad this mm-hmm. is james gunn's horribly minded project also captain boomerang got to do something really badass before he died yeah and you know what godspeed <laughs> that's right yeah yeah all the kids they still made the dumb team feel cool well except for weasel and savant but still and, and well, well well so well, that, that bird got revenge on savant Piece of yeah, garbage. and Weasel's alive, so it's cool. Yeah, he's still pretty alive, though. But, 
I like how it establishes the stakes. Because let's look at Savant versus Slipknot. Remember Slipknot from 2016 one? Uh, you mean where they try to recreate the scene from the book where Captain Boomerang just tricks Slipknot into blowing his head off? Yeah, they try that. But the thing is, it's like, they made it clear, oh yeah, this guy's gonna die. Like, they put no stake in that character. Yeah, it's literally just like, it, it's even an advertisement. He's like, oh, and by the way, here's Slipknot. He's totally not gonna die. None of the other people got, like, everyone else got giant flashy things with licensed music. He's like, walks on, like, stands next to people. And that, yeah, obviously, he's gonna die. They frame Savant as the main character. He's the main character in a ton of trailers. With the first shot is of him. We see the entire opening is from his point of He's view. He's played by Michael Rooker, who just played Yondu in James Gunn movie. We we are led to believe this will be the main character. And then Deet gone. Tone set expertly. Like it's like even though the trailers didn't really show it, like in a couple of years when you know we're long past trailers, people just watch movies, they just watch the movie. I'm very curious now how this goes because I feel like this movie was made to not have a trailer in a way because yeah. this this scene based this like movie basically shows that Team A that's your team in the movie. You have Harley Quinn, you got Rick Flagg, you got Kevin Boomerang. These are people from the last movie that who are returning. You got a whole new team with that looks like a fun cast. You got Savant who looks like to be like you knew kind of dead shot in the way, and immediately they all die. It's shock value, yes, but it's shock value that works very yeah, much, very the word good. Shock value has like garnered a negative connotation, but it can be done right. Yeah. Yep. This God, this is a fucking good movie. Mm-hmm. All right, Trey, I got a question. Yeah. Gas or ass? Bro, if you call this movie ass, you don't have an ass. All right, this movie's gas. You goddamn right. God, I lo- There's probably so much we didn't even touch on too. Yeah, man, like, this movie's it's Thinker, so good. Thinker was great. Little yeah, little, but whatever. Um, he he did have he did there was a, a little bit of insinuation on what happened with him and Starro that I don't really want to go into. It's kind of yeah. weird, but whatever. Thinker, I know th- I just said that. Um, Harley, we didn't. Of course, she's great. It's, it's Mar- yeah, Margot Robbie is based like she plays Harley Quinn as good as J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah, I'm not even surprised by it, like how how great she is anymore. She's fun. She's like she did like she like again. My one fear, well, not my one, one, one of my fears in this movie was if Harley was gonna like fit in because it because to like me seeing you know the cast of this you know these like D very D the F tier like characters and we just Harley Quinn like is she just there because DC forced Gun to play? It's like oh no, Gun Gun you know gave yeah, her a full on not- story arc. She like Harley belongs in this movie. One thing that was. Gunn really likes to do, like, a ri- like take characters and really make them his own. So, like, mm-hmm. Weasel. Weasel's not a weasel in the comics. He's a guy in a weasel suit. TDK. TDK is based off of a hero from the from the future who doesn't have that same power set. In the Legion of Doom. I mean, not Legion of Doom. Legion of Superheroes. Legion of Superheroes. His name is Arm Fall Off Boy in the comics. His arms don't levitate. He takes it off and uses it as a baseball bat. And the costume is completely different. And it was still cool as hell. Yeah. Harley, it's he had a bit of trouble, I think, making Harley his own. Or Harley felt a little out of place. Yeah, I, I, I would, I, I kind of like, you know, I saw her in the movie. I liked what Gunn did with Harley for the her story. That she get, like I said, she get, he gave her a bit of a side quest, but it didn't overstay its welcome, and it gave her some quick little character cool quicks. Yeah, true. So I, anyway, I didn't, I, I didn't dislike it. It's just like he, he feel like. He probably knew what to do with Harley, just didn't feel James Gunn enough. Yeah. All right. But, like, here's another thing, too. It's that, like, this whole cast, it feels like the whole thing with, you know, why these are such, like, low-grade characters. Because James Gunn really wanted a certain kind of character. Because he didn't, like, read comics, like, oh, I want to adapt this character. He's like, no, I wrote a script. I didn't give these characters really necessary, like, names. I just know what I want these characters to be. And just picked from, like, comics. He's like... Oh, I want a really fun, stupid dude with a really stupid power. Ooh, there's a dude who like uses his arms as baseball bats. Let's get him. Oh, I want a dude. I want a guy with a funny name. Dick Hurts. Yeah, you're in the movie. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, I want you know a lone wolf like you know shooter type character that you know has a kid and you know it's Deadshot esque, but not too much like Deadshot. Oh, this dude who shot Superman. 
will get him. Oh, I want to use do this dude with really like like an evil Captain America kind of thing. With this dude called Peacemaker, I'll take him, please. Oh, the dumbest character in DC Comics, I'll take him, please. Yeah, and yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he like challenges. Like he turned to his wife and went, "Hey Jennifer, twenty bucks, I can make the dumbest DC character super relatable and likable." And she's like, "You're on." And he earned that twenty bucks. Yeah, damn right. It's yeah, exactly. Like even the funniest scene, not I wouldn't call it the funniest scene, but one of the funniest scenes in the movie is when it's like the very beginning where it's the people in the control room betting on who's gonna die. Because that's us. That I, yeah, that was literally us. Like and I, I don't know like, if that was a reshoot or just James gonna be like, Yeah, I know I know the internet well enough to put this in the movie. But that I, just fits so well. And I put Rick Flag on that table and you went, No, nah, he's not gonna die, and you look like a damn fool. Fair enough. Also, he had more of an accent in this movie. Did you notice that? Well, he definitely had that more of the, like, yeah, I'm from Arkansas kind of. Yeah, we're his American compatriots. Because it, it was pretty present in some scenes in the first movie. But the, also, there were some scenes where he just sounded generic American. But in this yeah, movie, and it was very, boring. All right. All right, we're going to go strike team. And I was like, all right, whatever. I, I, I just, like, Flag and Snow is really good. Granted, I wouldn't say Flag had his own character. He was more of a guy who, you know, serviced the team as a whole. Like, how, like, Peacemaker basically looked up the Flag, and that broke his heart. Like, the, the scene of Flag getting his heart stabbed, that's not Flag's heart. That's Peacemaker's heart. His mm-hmm. heart breaking because he killed someone he looked up to. He didn't want to kill Flag, but he did it because his own sick, twisted version of Liberty forces him to. I love Peacemaker so much. Yeah, Peacemaker. I'm so excited for the series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all in all, God, that was a that movie was so, so good. good. Yes, I love it. All yes. right, now um, there was a trailer for a movie that released. Oh, really? Certain Marvel comic trailer. Oh, really? What was it? Was it was it was it for Thor? Was it was it for, was it for Doctor Strange? It's called Venom. It... There be Carnage. Ah, yes, yes, oh, yes. Oh, because my AirPods are dying. But yeah, um. All right. So, in all serious track, track, it happened. It it, it it actually exists. Now, we didn't think we it existed for a second. This, we should call this podcast the Victory Lap because I've er, I have had like three different W's this episode. You know what? Fair enough. Because, oh my God, I didn't think I, it, it was. I, I, I like everyone even thought for a second, like, are we actually not going to get one? And we I got it. Spider-Man No Way Home has a fucking trailer. Okay. I, here's, here's a story. I was in the middle of an online D&D session. I was pretty sick at the time, so I was kind of, like, zoned out. And then I get a text from Muhammad. Wake the fuck up, Kyle. And I check the text, and I see a link. Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. I say to the guys in call, hey, I'll be right back. And I leave the call. <laughs> Then I, this is just, I, just very calm. I'll be right back. No, it was not very. I was. I. I probably sounded like I was going to throw up. That's probably what I thought <laughs> guys threw up. Like, and I left the call, and then I go to my TV. I put it on, and I sit down, and like shaking, it starts off pretty normal, and then I see the pumpkin bomb, and I literally jumped out of my bed. It was like, oh my god, it was, oh my god, it's real. And you see a certain technical arm man come up, and his sly ass just like. Hello, Peter. No, you God actually have a theory it. regarding that line, right? Hmm. You have a theory with the Hello, Peter line, right? Well, I don't think it's Toby who he's saying it to. Who do you think it is? I think he's saying it to Tom because I like the idea that that Doc Ock just knows who spider-man is when he's just in the presence no matter what world he's in no matter who it is he just knows if someone is spider-man because he knows who peter parker is one theory i saw online that i really don't like is that they they can like tom andrew and toby can differentiate between each other but people can't tell them apart that's dumb because same universe don't that's... place the fact that they're technically the same person i they should feel like different people, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. It's like, come on, man. We're getting that group shot. We, okay. we know we are. I don't want to see it in any of the trailers, even though I know it will be. But how sick would it be if we just 
in the movie they waited to show us. Yeah, no, I actually do think we won't see Toby or Andrew any of the trailers. We'll get a tease at the very least. I like, think maybe yeah. it's maybe it's like a little bit of a phone call. He's like, "Hey, I need your help, Spider Man." My thought or something. My thought was like during like a fight, let's say between Doc Ock and uh, Tom Holland. Like Doc Ock says like a line like let's, like any last words, and Tom's like, "Yeah, I got friends." And two spider webs from different directions like grab the arms and cut to black. That would be a cool tease. Yeah. And we could even hear the iconic, like, higher-pitched Tobey Maguire spider flip. The one that, that just... That would be interesting. Like, the twip. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, this trailer, like... Because, like, you know, you know the theories of, you know, the Strange Spell and the Wanda Scarlet Witch and the Kang. Slash, strange I mean, Fist. Mortis. Strange Mephisto. No, he's not. Shut Fool up. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, I'm right. No, that's not how I, that works. I, I no, don't care if it's very obvious they're very much adapting one more day in the best way possible, but it's not Mephisto. Here's Shut my, up. Here's my thing. I didn't buy it for the entirety of WandaVision, and I was laughing at that the is no, That I, is untrue. No, I didn't nope. know what, No, I didn't know No. No, Kyle, I will go back to the episodes of us saying that it's Mephisto. Do it. I will go back to those episodes. I denied it. I remember denying it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Muhammad, if you're editing this, find a clip, please. Okay. And I believe, but no, this, I, I don't think it definitely is. I'm just going to say now it probably isn't Mephisto, but that's not strange. And it could be Mephisto. No, that is strange. No I way. do believe it. No. I believe he's up to something, but he's in his way. I think he's... I, I don't think he's... I think the spell generally did go wrong, but I do think that he's up to something. I think he's putting multiverse prisoners because I feel like he's being his own version of the TVA. I think he's just, you know, when the multiverse is expand... Because, nah, here's what I actually do think. Okay. Uh, we we had we had a technical difficulty thing again. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, what was I saying? Ah, uh, yes, Strange. I think um, Strange knew about the TVA. I think like he knew about Amortis dying. I think he knew about um, you know, Sylvie killing Amortis and once expanding, and he took Parker's you know problem. To, uh, and he decided to open the multiverse so he could trap, so he could try to fix the multiverse again and trap everybody, like all the multiverse, you know, criminals and people into a prison so he could hold them there and the, try to fix, you know, the worlds again. But Parker's gonna, but Spider-Man's gonna see that as immoral and wrong and try to stop him. If this is strange, my theory for it is that, what was my theory for it again? Shit, I was thinking about it while you were talking. I was listening, I promise. Um, I See, the thing with yours is it just makes Strange sound like too much of a dick. But he is, though. Not that much, though. He's grown a lot since his first movie. Yes, and I, I do feel that, but I feel like this is still to be enough in character for him to where it's like, you know, because like he's also basically like imprisoning bad people he's like he's gonna imprison you know the sinister six and like we like that's where i think where we saw lizard in the trailer i feel like that's his you know own little prison and parker's like no this is wrong all right i remember my theory wait what was it oh i forgot it again while you were talking god damn it okay no, no i remember it was if someone is if he is trying to cast a spell in earnest then my theory is that he's not replacing he's not wiping memories he is replacing them with like memories from another universe and while he does that some other magical force sees that as an opening and opens up the multiverse and my theory before the no way home trailers were out i thought that it was going to be an interdimensional craven the hunter doing that like going universe to universe making his sinister six but i don't think it's that this time i don't know what it would be this time though hmm but yeah, I, that's my theory. That I still think it's not strange. Also, because the the ramifications of an, a mass mi mind wipe spell is huge. Like yes. for strange to even touch that, for, it's just a little sus to me. 
Well, I do think he definitely has something up his sleeve because there's no way he's even like, oh, Peter, this is a petty problem. This is your fault. I'm not going to help you. He definitely has something more to it, something more little, you know, mustache truly. But I don't think he's evil, and I don't think he's Mephisto. What is Scarlet Witch is up to something? I feel like she's not going to be up to something in this movie. I think it'll tie into into Multiverse of Madness a bit. It yeah, could. well, definitely, you know, more than a bit. Doctor Strange is in this movie. It could. I think it very much could be Scarlet Witch doing multiverse shenanigans. Mm. But, you know, no. I do, because this movie, the scene of, you know... Park Peter saying that, hey, no one's going to know who I am. Oh, this person should know, or this person should know, or this person should know. Just tell them that, again. No, it's, it, no, I don't think he's going to. I feel like that's going to be his arc in this movie. Lord, I feel like what, to, keep, to be Spider-Man, you need to keep it fully secret. And not only that, but it's just, you know, because he realized him telling people he's Spider-Man didn't keep people safe. It hurt people. Mm-hmm. I feel like someone's definitely going to be close to him is going to die, and this is what's going to make him be like, you know, you know, a Spider-Man, you know, who sac- has to sacrifice friendships to keep here's his t- identity safe. Here's a tea. A lot of people are annoyed with MC Spider-Man because he's not he's very loosey-goosey with his identity. But a lot of people here's my problem with a lot of Spider-Man fans. And I say this as a huge Spider-Man fan, but just be in the room with me. That they're like, oh, anyway, how do I put this? They're like, oh, Peter should be this. Peter should be this, and Peter should be this. Without ever learning that, though, they want Peter to start a certain way and just always be that way. I think it's really interesting to have Peter grow into the Peter Parker we always wanted him to be. Because a lot of people look at Tobey Maguire, and he kind of just immediately became the Spider-Man everyone wants him to be. I kind of like that this Peter Parker's kind of like stumbling across the... I, I like that a lot. I think that's fine. Yeah, he, he needs help. Like, he has a lot of mentors, sure. But he's becoming, you know... Spider-Man. But I like I liked the thought a lot of him having to learn that his secret identity can't be played with like that. Yeah. Vince, you know. Also, Vince Matt Murdock's in this movie. You, you, you know he is. I see those hairy arms. I see I that stopped. suit and tie. That man is Matthew Murdock, Matt and Murdoch? I am happy. Matt Murdock was always the one I thought wasn't real because it really felt like wishful thinking. But now I'm like, okay, th- 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 yeah, it's Matt. Okay, fine. Fine, you win. He's coming back. I only need him for like two scenes. I don't need him to be in this movie for long. I just need him in it because he's gonna be in for two for like a couple like little lawyer bits. Peter's gonna go find Strange, and then end credit scene. Matt's gonna feel a door open up, see a bright red Daredevil costume, and be like, Daredevil will return. I want the next Spider-Man movie to be Spider-Man Daredevil team up movie. Honestly, that would be the best. Because, like, it's quite, like, this is going to, like, this whole, like, thing is going to be wrapped up. I like this movie's going to wrap up Peter's high school trilogy, and then mm-hmm. Peter's going to go to college. A.K.A. the AKA the best Spider-Man stories. Exactly. That's why you, That's why people be patient. He was learning in high school, but now he's going to be Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. God, I'm so excited. It's going to be good, man. I'm kind of worried for this plot, stru- plot structure, though. Yeah, I'm I'm still, again, I'm worried because, you know, I want Peter to fit into this movie, but, you know, we have a lot no, to fit into this That's not my issue. Movie. I kind of, I don't want all the interesting stuff to only happen in the in the third act. Yeah. Because I don't want all the cool multi, because then again, it would be really hard to have fleshed out characters only in the third act. Yeah, because, like, that, that would feel, like, just really fan servicey and annoying to have just Toby and Andrew just show up for the final battle. Yeah. What I, I in an ideal world, I would want the lawyery stuff to only be like first twenty minutes and then the rest of the two hours is like spidey stuff. Yeah. That would be it would I would hope you could do it without it feeling cramped. I would really yeah. hope. But right. then And this movie's right, gonna be too is this movie's gonna be long too, like two thirty I heard. Yeah. The thing is though, with this with the writer for this movie and Far From Home and Homecoming wrote some wrote what is generally believed to be the best community episodes. So they know how to ra- wrap up stories in 20 minutes. So I very much believe that what we could be seeing is like we get 20 minutes of lawyer shit and then multiverse is opened 
and we're dealing with like that's like 10 15 minutes rest of the movie is interactions between these three characters i that's my big i'm so excited to see them interact and and play off each other because like Listen, I, here's what I think. I feel like we're going to get the lawyer bits in the beginning. Something is going to happen, whether someone died or something happens to Peter or one of his family, that makes Ned's him be dead. like, okay, I have to go to Doctor Strange now. Ned's dead. Ned is so dead. Ned is going to be Hobgoblin. He is nope. not dying. Nope, Ned is dead. Dead as a doornail in this movie. You've been not nope. telling me twice. Nope, nope, MJ nope. is going Ned to is die. So- no, no, here's the thing. I want Ned to survive. Ned, other than Peter, has been my favorite character in the, in this trilogy. Ned is so, so. No, no, no. I know who's going to die. Happy is going to die. You son of a. You're right. Yep. I, I forgot Happy was in this movie. No, he was. He was in even in the trailer too. Yeah. No. I, no. I remember now. The shot with the guns pointed towards. Oh my God! What if they kill him? Oh my Happy, God! You're right. Uh, Happy is dead. Oh God! You're right. Happy's dead. I don't think. John Favreau, I love you so much. Rest in peace. Yeah. This would also this is also a pretty good time that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not much I can it's say. Also, yeah. yeah. It's also like just like to like backtrack a little bit to like the whole Peter and identity thing. But people not knowing Peter's identity is gonna be a really big deal. Like Shield's not gonna know. Stark Industries is gonna know. He's gonna lose yeah. like a lot of tech. He's gonna need to make his own suit. It'll be kind of a clean wipe for his character, which I'll, I even someone who's been defending these movies kind of greasy kind of needs. Yeah. Which, like, you know, you're like, I, because, like, him, I need to really know what no one's going to know who Parker is. Like, does that mean no one will ever know? Like, are we going to go, like, kind of change the way how Civil War and and Infinity War and Endgame went when Tony doesn't know that Peter's Spider Man? I hope that's not what they do. Also, here's another thing don't do the thing in the comic, in the comics, when Peter reveals his identity to people after, um, one, one day more again all the memories come back like he'll take the mask off like there's this really good scene of him revealing his identity the fantastic four again and like they're like oh peter where have you been we missed you and like it's just a really and i love that moment don't do that again though like i'm not the keep it to where it's literally a quick clean wipe and they can't get those memories back yeah but just, just uh, like i i at least hope they make it so that we know that tony's like you know Tony always knew, though. Yeah. Because that's like, that was, because Tony, you know, knowing Tony's relationship with Peter is what, you know, kind of lets him to go figure out time travel. And, you know, the moment of him and Peter hugging. Yeah. That was, that's sweet. Like, you know, let's be loose with, you know, what this means of, and nobody will know. Like, everybody who is alive in the current MCU will not know who Spider Man is, but the people is, who have died. There's stuff know. that comes with that, though. Like, Infinity War. Will Doctor Strange forget Infinity War? I don't. Th- I feel like Doctor Strange will be the only one who knows, considering but he's the one casting the spell. There's a lot of exceptions you gotta make, though. Like Captain Marvel. Will she just forget Endgame now? Because she knew. Hi, hi, Peter Parker. Oh wait, you're not Peter Parker. Who yeah. are you? How selective is this memory thing gonna be? That's a, there's yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. Now, now that we're diving deep into this, this is. This is hard. That's why I was telling you the other day that I think they might not do the memory wipe thing. I think they I feel might like they're gonna do it in some way because I really don't think they're gonna go a route of the of Peter Parker having a revealed identity. Yeah, but it's kind of never been done before. I mean, in the yeah, comics, obviously it was like that. But the could you imagine? Could you imagine Spider-Man Twitter losing their collective shits? If they just had the rest of the MCU where the world knows Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly. Peter can't because that puts everyone in danger and this really cool arc we've been talking about for 20 minutes couldn't happen. Yeah. So what next? Like, there's really a... uh, It's really hard. Like, it's really hard. I mean, we we have some really smart nerds behind the scenes who probably will figure this out. Like, listen, we didn't understand the whole time travel thing in Endgame, at least I didn't. Then Loki explained pretty well, you know, what it actually meant. So, you know, I if they explain, you know, how we don't know who Spider-Man is, but these movies still happen the same way, I, 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 I will trust I, them if they explain it correctly. I think they might not go the memory wipe route. They might go the disproved Mysterio route and have Peter Parker and uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man or something stand next to each other and be like, eh, we're different. 
Yeah, but at the same time, it looks like Peter's like just basically admitting to people that he is Spider Man. But what if he doesn't? Like you can even tell him like the lawyer shot. He's like, I didn't kill Mister. What if in that shot he also goes, I'm not Spider Man. If that, I I believe if that you know happened. But my thing is that he says he didn't say. He says the drones did, which basically means you know. Yeah. He was there. He did it. I don't. I feel like he's just not trying to you know be coy about it. Yeah. But like, you know, it, really, if, it's really it's hard. like. Yeah. They'll they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. There's some smart dudes. Mm-hmm. Maybe ooh, maybe he could do a thing where like anything before the um Mysterio thing is still fair game. Yeah. That's it, they might even do that because like the spell can't reach that far. You could probably do that. You could probably get away with that. Oh yeah. shit! Because then he mentioned Ned would forget. Mm. Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! Why is this? Mm. This is hard. Well, we're, we're trying to figure this out, but it's not our job to figure this yeah, out. I was going to say, we're not writing it. We're fine. Yeah. Let's talk about the Sinister Six. I mean, what else is there to talk about? Pretty cool. Uh, that Electro, Sandman, and Lizard were are in this trailer. But I hear people tell me Sandman are, is not in this trailer when he is, and people need to shut up. I thought for a second he might not be, but yeah, he definitely is. Yeah, it's like, guys... You could say that, oh, the lightning just kicked up sand. No, the sand was protecting Peter Parker from lightning. I Sandman like, is in yeah. this trailer. A lot of people wanted Doc Ock to be protecting Peter, because, like, you know, end of Spider- I like Sandman protecting him a lot, too, though. I'm just imagining yeah. a scene where, like, Electro is floating over, like, Tobey Maguire, and as a big bolt of lightning had to hit him, a wall of sand comes up. The sand forms into Sandman. Tobey Maguire's like, like, Flint, what are you doing? He's like, go, I'll take care of him. And, and I'm, I'm acting like a little kid, and I really don't care. This is good. This is going to be so cool. Yeah. And it's also like, I have a seeing suspicion that it's going to take, like, we're not ta- basically taking these characters at the end of their story in the movies. Because I think that they that Strange is taking Doc Ock from the train scene. Because remember when he's just, like, no. flipping around trains? I don't think they're yeah. taking Doc Ock to where he's, you know, died. Yes. However, I don't like that. Why? Because I, I just don't. Like, I don't want them to mess with the already established continuity in these movies. I don't think they're going to... I feel like the way it's going to end is that, like, you know... Also, Alfred Molina already said they aren't going to do that. Mm, yeah. Remember, yeah, remember he, he said it picks up from where it left off? But at the same time, it's like, you know, Ock basically sacrificed himself. Like, what's going to change then? Because they're I'm, not going to make any sense in the world for him to be like, oh, I'm going to sacrifice myself. Oh, wait, I'm evil again. Well, because well, you could tell because of the red arms on the, um, on the, um, on the, the, the arms. You could tell because of the red glow on the arms that the arms are in control again. Yeah. But red glow means arms are in control. White glow means he's in control. Mm. I don't know. So we can we'll see. see. Repair the chip. I said, no, destroy the chip again. You, you know what I mean. Yeah. I think I I think they're gonna take him from the end of these. It's hard. It's really hard to figure out. Yeah. Also, My main I, thing is that like like you, you saw those leaks of uh the pictures with like uh I tried avoiding them as hard as I could, but I didn't. Yeah, the picture of Osborne uh yeah. and Electro. Electro I, you could very easily be like, Oh, his vibe you could very easily like pull some science bullshit out of your ass and like have it be like he survived. Yeah, no, Electro, but, like, here's the thing. That elect he looks like Bats from Baby Driver. That doesn't look like the nerdy piece of shit from Amazing Spider-Man 2. That well, he's, a he's got- badass with yellow lightning. How did he become different? That's what I, I want to know. But I'm all for it. Yeah. But, like, he, my the thing is that, like, is that we're going to say that this is an Electro from a different universe that wasn't the Electro from the Amazing movie? No, they shouldn't. That That would feel like false advertising. I don't know, it's like... Oh, it's the same actor, but it's still different. It's like, just do, just do, do, do the thing. Come on. Also, this small tidbit: fine, Toby finally getting to fight the lizard is just something I've, I'm so excited for. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Like Connors was in the Raimi movies, man. It was right there. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of these characters, you could finagle ways for them to survive and still be evil. Yeah. Like, I don't think that the lizard is going to be the same as he was amazing. I think he's just going to be a CGI thing that doesn't speak. I think he'll speak. But is going to be the same actor? Yeah, probably. Mm. What's, Riz- what's Rizafan been doing? 
Nah, but... Exactly. I think you can... Plus, you've got to give Andrew something, someone to talk to. Fair. Because he's barely getting any rep in this movie. Yeah. Especially if your Electro Theory is true. Yeah. I don't... I have... I don't... I just don't want them to tamper with the already established continuity of these movies. So right. I think be really careful because like that's like we were even talking like we were just talking about this with you know what this whole spell means like when i rewatch these movies i don't want to feel like i'm wasting my time because a future movie is going to make these inaccurate yeah so even if if they do if at the same time like also i really want to see where toby and andrew have been since their movies like i want to see time pass like, that's my biggest thing. That's, like, the reason I want to see them again. I want to see where they've been. I want to see what they've been doing. Yeah, what's Toby been up for, you know, the past 14 years? He better be a college professor, I swear to God. Honestly. He has a, he has a kid. He, if he's retired, it's because of Spider-Man's taking over. I have, I've already thought of all of this. Toby Maguire, still Spider-Man. He's got a kid. Mayday Parker. He's trained to be Spider-Woman. Still with Mary Jane Watson, though we're not going to see her in this movie. And then... P- and then Peter Parker, Parker Industry, uh, Andrew Garfield, he runs Parker Industries. He is currently retired as Spider-Man because of how hard the job was. This that Spider-Man does strike me as one that would give up, and I think his arc in this movie will be learning that his world does still need a Spider-Man. Or maybe he stays in the Marvel universe and he becomes Kane, the Scarlet Spider. I would hate so much if I found out Garfield retired. Why? Because he already did. Exactly. But that's so dumb. So you're telling me that in Spider-Man 2, end of the movie, he retires, and it's already the absolute insane thing of him just re- becoming unretired in five in span of five minutes' time, and you're telling me he just retired again off I'm screen. not saying he retired right after. I'm saying it's within his character. This is a Spider-Man that, frankly, doesn't have this upstanding ideals that we know Spider-Man for. He feels like a Spider-Man that would quit when things got hard, and because we know that because he did. And I feel but, like it would make sense for when he's on top and to have Parker Industries to for him to quit. I just feel like that would make sense. I will only accept the Parker Industries, him not being Spider-Man, if he built drones or something to protect the city. That's I, the only I, thing I would believe. No, I don't think that works. Because, the, even, listen, Miss Spider-Man 2 is a bad movie, but let's not ruin it further by saying that P- Parker gave up again. Because you want to be Parker Industries. Hard. He's giving up when things are hard again. I just, I don't. I, I don't... feel like that. I still feel like that works. I feel like that would give him a really cool arc. I don't. I just, I just, no. Then what would you want for him? I don't. I'm fine with Parker Industries, and I just, I want him to be a somewhat veteran Spider Man. Well, we're already getting that with Toby. But are we? I'm fine with Toby's yeah. retired. The... I be- I'll believe what that. What are you talking about? I'll believe that. No, in what world? Because, like, listen, if he's like, if he really, because, like, again, if a Spider Man was protecting the world and he had a wife and the city was safe, I'd believe Toby would retire before Andrew would. I really don't. To, in my opinion, Toby, t- to me, has always just perfectly represented what a Spider Man should be in live action. I don't see him quitting. Because he I, only. I just don't see that but happening. See, the difference between my thing and your thing is that I don't think Toby's quitting. I think he's saying that I've done everything that I need to do. I Andrew beca- doing Parker Industries, I see that as him quitting. Yeah, exactly. That's supposed to be his arc. Uh, but he's already quit. Yeah, exactly. But that's dumb. We only saw him come back for like a second. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So in, I feel like it would make sense for him to quit. I don't see Toby quitting ever. I don't think Toby's quitting. I think he's retiring. I don't think I don't. I don't know. Just no. Being <laughs> <laughs> what? Fine. I will just, agree no, to I disagree. Use. Watch them both not be retired. <laughs> yeah, they're both still just active Spider-Man. Because I think you need to differentiate them somehow. And in my opinion, I just don't see Toby quitting. Mm. They probably they'll, they'll differentiate them somehow. I I think it makes the most sense for them both to be active, but who knows. Yeah. All right. Anything else to talk about? No, nah, man. No way home. It's yeah. here. It's here. All right. Are, all right. Are we ready to sign off finally? Yes. But my right. I'll, I'll do the ending I'm quote. I'm not gonna say the final quote. I'll do. I'll, I already have one planned. Oh, okay.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to the Thinking Box podcast again. We are sorry to, this one took up, took so long to come out. Very happy you're watching. All right, we know it's a long one, so we're going to send you off now. And, and always remember, life goes on. God. God. Yeah. All right, end okay. the recording. <laughs>